Allez, on est à quatre... quelques instants de, du départ avec le cavalier suédois. Les quel cavalier Sacré pilote, hein, Ludwig Zonerstal. Rendez-vous compte, déjà, il a trois chevaux cet après-midi. C'est vous dire un petit peu eh, la qualité du cavalier qui est capable de qualifier et de faire progresser trois chevaux au plus haut niveau mondial. Mais euh, pour cause, hein, il essayait, il s'était lancé, Ludwig Zellerstein, il faisait partie de l'équipe de Suède qui était euh, aux Jeux Olympiques de Londres et c'était quatrième par équipe. Il a participé très régulièrement au championnat d'Europe avec deux médailles d'argent par équipe en 2013 chez lui à well our apologies for the breaking broadcasting but we are now back with you live on this magnificent afternoon in the southwest of france at les cinq étoiles de Pau, and out on pierre michelet's 35 fence track we see ludwig svenestal on the salonette the young 10 year old mayor by numero uno making uh, their way up towards the third fence. Well, one and two in their traditional positions here at Pau. These uh, first three very inviting fences. And then over that third fence, the table de le relais. Well, after the dressage on Thursday and Friday, it was Tom McEwen and Talita de Cursa who uh, led the way on that score of 24.9. Just behind them, Tim Price and Wesco on 25.6. Zen Shearer and Ros Ganter, fifth here last year on 27.2. But we focus on Ludwig Svenestal on the first of his three horses and at the first double jumping effort fence. It is fence number four and it is the Chateau de la Ville de Pau up onto the mound. The ground then descends away directly towards the B element. And it's not until we get to fences uh, 14 and 15 that we actually get an alternative, very much the direct route there at 4NB for Chateau de la Ville de Pau. So we're following our first horse here at Les Cinq Etoiles de Pau, synonymous uh, with top class eventing, top class single carriage driving. In fact, we're hosting the single carriage driving championships here next year in 2020. And of course, racing with the uh, magnificent race course and training facilities. And uh, into part of that training facility, the horse and riders will go this afternoon on Pierre Michelet's 35 numbered fence track. So here comes Ludwig. Well, the uh, rain that we had early in the rear, has in, earlier in the week, has done nothing but to uh, improve this ground which is superb and then this loop before going back to the water that upright rustic before the first of the three water complexes and uh, nine a and b into the water the offset swans through the water and then the loop straight round to number 10 the uh, skinny fence, which will take the horses back into that roll top, which will take the horses back into the water, then turning sharp left, 11, meet the rising ground, and then 12, and beautifully done by Ludwig Svenestal and Salomon. This huge crowd here on this uh, Saturday afternoon in the magnificent autumn sunshine at Po, really appreciating Ludwig's uh, and Sulinex uh, jump through the first of the water complexes. Now the, uh, the big chariot with those barrels underneath, as we saw last year, some big, wide, well, solid, inviting fences on well. this Pierre course. Well, well Pierre Michelet, well-known, in fact, renowned for being a master at designing courses on tracks, on uh, flat, galloping uh, spaces, as he did uh, earlier this year in Aradupin, and uh, certainly a specialist at doing that here at Po. Well, taking very much the direct route there at 14 and 15, Ludwig Svenestol and Salunet, 14 uh, and then 15 is actually a separate numbered fence once the horses have uh, gone down that hill if they miss that wide, narrow but uh, very wide roll top they have the option of swinging round through 180 degrees through an 
to an upright brush. But no problems for this uh, young man brought forward by Ludwig. Ludwig, who was, uh, did so well on the horse that he will bring forwards later this afternoon. And, oh dear, what an unfortunate situation as they went out into the country. Ludwig at fence 16, unfortunately just uh, parting company. And uh, thankfully, both horse and rider on their feet. But uh, Salonette just looking as though she caught the top of that brush fence, which takes the horse and riders out into the country, onto the inside of the training track. But importantly, as always, horse and rider welfare of the utmost importance, and both horse and rider up straight away. There will be many, many more days for this exciting uh, young 10-year-old mare, Salonette. But now we move to the first of our British riders. A very strong contingent of British riders here. And just glancing off the B element at four, the uh, Chateau de Pope in there. Making their debut at the five-star level. Both her horses here at Pope, both making their five-star debut for Felicity Collins. This time it is the uh, mare by Nintendo setting themselves up for this brush corner once again no problem when presented for the second time and particularly as you go up the stars this is the five star the uh, pinnacle of our sport you really see the technical difficulty jumped by them themselves the fences are one thing to jump them one after another on the turn particularly having descended from a fence like the chateau at the top of the mound a totally different aspect to the jump but on their way again great to see this uh, this uh, young rider one of uh, britain's great talents for the future making her way now towards the uh, next fence which will uh, lead her five and six which will then lead her up towards that loop before the water well, just going back to the dressage phases on Thursday and Friday, there were two dressage sessions on Thursday afternoon, two sessions yesterday morning, Friday, two sessions yesterday afternoon, and uh, in uh, Fourth place was Gemma Tattersall and Yalapino with a score of 27.2. In fact, in uh, third place, equal with Ros Cantor. Sarah Bullimore and Compierre in fifth with 27.7. Chris Burton, Quality Purdy, must be one of the favourites here on 27.8. Ascona M. Tim Price is second horse, 28.1. 28.8 for Alex Bragg and Zagreb. Ninth was Arvara FH, but Avedon and Andres Dabowski for Germany, 30.4. And then in tenth place, Archie Rocks, the former racehorse with Felix Fogg for Switzerland. Really good score for this combination in 10th place, 31.6. Well, we're looking once again at Felicity Collins. Huge jump over the second element, over the uh, spruce green swamp in the water for Felicity and her first horse. Come round. And again, another glance off, this time at fence number 11, the separately numbered fence in the water, coming back into the water. And uh, those swans were replaced at the, uh, just to the left and uh, 100 metres away to the left of this first water last year as a uh, double jumping up at Effort Fence. Well, once again, no problem when negotiated for the second time. And uh, once again, so good to see Felicity on her way. Over 11, meeting the rising ground at 12 and away out into the country. So the first two horses out on course. Salonette, Ludwig Svenestol and Felicity Collins at RSH Contendor. Well, if you're just joining us, a very, very warm welcome wherever you may be joining us in the globe. We're bringing you all the live action of Les saint Etoiles Depot and the cross country for the five star eventing here on Saturday afternoon. Magnificent going, magnificent weather, and a huge crowd who uh, this morning saw the second phase of the carriage driving, the single horse carriage driving here in the main arena, the second phase being the cones, the equivalent of the show jumping in eventing. Well, new starter already at... Ready to go. And it is Tom McEwen on his uh, first horse, Figaro van Hittbruxenhof. Away. Applause as the combination make their way out. Tom, who's uh, enjoyed huge success over the years at the uh, junior young rider and senior levels. Always uh, such a strong contender. 
having won the Tattersalls under 25s and of course the uh, iconic Bramham under 25 long format four star competition at Bramham in, North, in West Yorkshire with his two top horses here we'll be seeing Toledo de Cursa a little later Toledo de Cursa who uh, leads with Tom after the dressage but it is uh, now Figaro van Hittenbroek who are away Barbara Cooper owning the mare by Tuba van Hitt Kiphoff they come forwards in 11th place after dressage with a score of 31.9. Well, in a really great rhythmic canter towards the first of the questions on this Pierre Michelet course, steadily over that chateau at the top of the mound. And locked on well, need a little bit of encouragement from Tom, but locked on well to the second element of 4B, no problem. And away to the brush that you can just see in front of you, a really wide brush, inviting. And a picture there you see of the first water and the competitors having been out into the country and negotiated three fences will then, uh, four fences in fact, will then come back through the water to the side of the main water once again. What a uh, picture this course is at any time of the year that couldn't be better here in the uh, splendor of the golden autumn sunshine. You can see the road there running along the side of the track. Always one of the great uh, iconic features, of course, at Poe that it's held very close to the uh, town of Poe itself. And uh, such a great social occasion for all those uh, involved down here coming from many miles, as of course is the case with all our five stars around the world. Well, another to glance off, and uh, this time Tom McEwen on Figaro van Hed Ruxenhof. Just glancing off that uh, fence on the loop at seven, just coming through again. B element, just knocking that uh, white flag to the left, but uh, no problem as it looked from here for this combination between the flags. Well, now Tom taking those uh, upright rustic bars, this little loop before going to the first of the water complexes, three water complexes here at Poe. We're really driving forwards over the green spruce roll top, and then same again, seeing the stride, and Figaro van Hedbruxenhof obliging. Now the right-handed turn, back to ten. Roll top down into the water, turn left. Really twisting and turning this course through the water in and out. Seeing those strides beautifully, each one coming up magnificently for Tom McEwen and Figaro van Heet Bruxenhof. Huge applause from the crowd, really appreciating the world-class riders. We have an absolutely star-studded cast here at Po 2019. There is no doubt about that as they uh, take the chariot. Meeting the uh, rising ground once again. 14, then 15, taking the direct route. Again, needing that encouragement from Tom Figaro van Hit Bruxenhof, but obliging. Just being uh, eased along in this uh, steady gallop by Tom. It is a warm day here. Well, now, uh, one of our uh, definite favourites uh, in terms of prospects for a win, and it is uh, Tim Price. First of all, uh, brings forward Ascona M, who are the, the mayor who is uh, herself in a great position after dressage on a score of 28.1 in seventh place. And now we, uh, we see Tim at the can, the, uh, again, a relatively steady canter, having taken that uh, loop after fence one. You can see the warm-up area in the background behind the palm trees as they pop over the log at two. Really inviting three fences to get our horses underway on this flat gap galloping track here at Poe. And if we uh, just look at the scores 
from the dressage. It uh, was so tight at the top. It always is, of course, uh, now that the coefficient is taken away. Makes for such an exciting uh, competition. So close at the top, 24.9, our leader, Tom McEwen, on his uh, other horse to come out later to lead a de Cursa. And uh, top 10, top five, Fifth place, Sarah Bulamo on Compierre, 27.7. Then in 10th place, Archie Rocks and Felix Vogt on 31.6. Really nothing in it. And for those of you who are uh, new to eventing, delighted you're with us as we see Tim Price taking a world-class jump over the B element at four. Locked on and uh, saw every inch of that uh, fence right in the middle. But for those of you who are uh, new to eventing at this long format, the second phase is the cross country. Well, this is Felicity Collins and having another problem again and unfortunately eliminated those uh, three separate run outs or stops at three separate fences, meaning uh, it is elimination, unfortunately. And that was the second of the waters that uh, you were seeing there at uh, fence number 25. Again, no alternative there. Beautiful roll top, big roll top in, turning right through uh, nearly 90 degrees uh, to the uh, skinny in the water and then leaving the water and another big roll top having left the water. So those uh, dressage scores, it is the uh, lowest score that uh, we're looking for because uh, eventing run on the basis of penalty points awarded throughout the three phases. As I say, in the long format, the dressage followed by the cross country, followed by the show jumping here tomorrow in the arena. The final two fences for the show jumping are uh, fences 34 and 35. The final jump, double jumping effort fence is at 34 in front of the grandstands. And then the horses are directly uh, to our right over that final fence. Le uh, Sanke Etoile de Pau Bullfinch to finish. So, Tim Price continuing to go well. Tim's turned out at the water on his first horse. Well, Tim will be uh, delighted with that. He led after cross country last year. Unfortunately, uh, had uh, a problem with the water last year. That was superb. From the world number three, former top, uh, world number one, but Tim always at the top of the game. Tim and uh, wife Janelle have uh, a, an incredible record in the, uh, particularly the uh, European five stars over the last three years, but also uh, in America as well. Tim on that podium this year at the Kentucky three-day event in Kentucky in America. Well, looking uh, very much within herself. The mayor, Ascona M. Just an 11-year-old by Casaro. Owned by Mrs. Suzanne Hutin, Lucy and Ben Sangster, and Peter Vella. So Peter Vella. Well, now this is the fence that takes the combinations out into the centre of this magnificent training area here. This racing training area, the uh, grass and all weather track on the outside. The Po race course itself, just a couple of miles down the road. Well, it's interesting here. The horses, after that brush that lead them into the country go around that training fence and then have to slow down and go through 90 degrees to take that uh, skinny fence. Well, we're on to our uh, new starter, and it is uh, Rigis Prudent with Van der Duplessis. Van der Duplessis, the fifth to come forward onto this track. A track with a, an optimum time, 11 minutes, 15 seconds. Regis Prudon, the uh, very much being welcomed by the home crowd. You can hear those uh, applause ringing out. Well, we've had a French winner here over the last three years. 
two years ago it was Gwendolyn Fur who won by the narrowest of margins but uh, when she did from Sarah Boulimo on uh, Rêve de Roulet who we will uh, see just a little later on uh, on cross country track here and then last year Thibaut Fournier who uh, the uh, wonderful young Frenchman and his fight in his uh, five-star debut last year with Thibaut Lelatier he was he just tipped just pipped Gemma Tattersall to that uh, top spot Gemma here with two very exciting younger horses who've uh, experienced so much success at the four-star level this year before coming here to Po, Yalapino and Chile Night. Tim Price on the mare, Escona M, still going very well. Still on the bridle but not pulling. Over 21, that's a single upright. Sleeper can be tricky, of course. Horse needs to keep its concentration. Now, in the middle of the track, this is a right handed galloping curve, and Tim just asking Ascona M to extend that gallop gate. Tim just having a glance down at his watch, seeing those uh, timing markers. And now he comes to 22, this double. Now, slightly different configuration to last year, but nevertheless, just as tricky. Off the tight corner, that wide roll top. Turn left directly to B. No problem at all for Ascona M and Tim Price. Cross country jumping, personified. We'll come back to Tom soon, but it is Tom McEwen on his first horse with a uh, score, cross country score of 41, 20 for the uh, glance off for the run out. Now 2.4 time penalties cross country, those uh, time penalties to add for the seconds over the optimum time. Well I'm sure that after that uh, glance off Tom will be delighted that he got back on track with his, uh, the first of his uh, two extremely good horses. Swedish Proudhon at the Direct du Carrier Agricole, the agricultural cart. Now we're watching those pictures of Regis Proudhon on one of these uh, straight gallop stretches to 14 over the brush and then no problem at all at 15 a separately numbered fence and it is a wide roll top at 15 particularly having come down from that uh, mound having jumped the fence at 14 so all our competitors so far have taken the direct route at 14 and 15 non deciding to uh, or feeling they need to take that alternative route so that confirmed score in for Figaro van het Bruxenhof and Tom McEwen Dressage score 31, cross country 42, so a total of 74.3. So pictures of Regis Prudent before we see Tim Price and Ascona M turn right in between those two North American stations down into the third water complex. 28A, 28B, meet the rising ground, the loop behind the uh, main area of the water complex itself before making their way on this galloping loop to the left, which will uh, take them to the beautifully presented Broom, which is Broom, at 29. Gemma Tattersall, chilly night. Gemma out on the first of her two horses, meets the chateau at the top of the hill. Locks on, bit of encouragement needed, but no problem, as uh, Gemma carrying up. Wilbury Wonder Pony, the uh, wonderful mascot of the charity set up by the late, very young and great Hannah Francis. Well, we're back with the uh, one of our home riders here in France, Regis uh, Prudent. 
Regis with uh, Van der Duplessis. Dress arch total of 35.7. Put them into 28th spot after that first phase. Well, the South Francais, Beymer by uh, Leonardo de Louvo, looking uh, very much at home here, certainly on the bridle. Had a little slip there for uh, Gemma Tattersall's horse, Chilly Night. Picked up the rhythm again well, smartly away from the bars at number eight. Well, very close to home now, Tim Price and Ascona M. This has been a superb round. It'll be interesting to see what their time is. Sees the stride at that final fence, looks down at his watch. Tim Price. Uh, just as we wait uh, for Tim Price's score to uh, come in, here we are. Cross country, 16.4. So 16.4 time penalties, 44.5 their total after the second phase on this magnificent afternoon here in the southwest of France. Now Regis Prudent turns right to that uh, big boxed skinny in the middle of the second water. Huge loop, leap over that. Fence having exited the water, a huge pat from Regis. Well, you heard that interview with Tim Price in both uh, English and uh, French, and Tim was saying it was hard. And uh, he was saying that uh, he didn't think we'll see too many inside the time today. And that really was a superb round from Tim Price and uh, Skona M, the first to be clear cross country. 16.4 uh, time penalties, so 44.5 for Ascona M. As called previously. So pictures there of the entrance into the arena when the horses come off the track to negotiate the final three jumping efforts. The uh, final two fences, the final three jumping efforts here in the main arena. Sam Aykroyd now for Great Britain with the Anglo-European stud book registered uh, Baymer, owned by Sam himself, Woden the third, 24th after dressage, 34.6 their score in that first phase. And you can uh, see the clock ticking down there in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, ticking down from that optimum time. Our pictures again of the first water complex. It is a very wide expanse of water and uh, only a portion of it is used for the cross-country itself. 
both uh, the run through the first time and then uh, being used for the as the third passage through water. Sam Ackroyd and Woden. Well, a rider who made a seamless change several years ago from the young rider to the senior levels and was uh, enjoying so much success at the young rider level whilst uh, still really establishing himself at the senior levels with what was then three-star uh, competition wins. No stranger to success at uh, Bramham at the under-25 level and uh, at Tattersalls just a week earlier. Seamlessly through the water. Woden, this 16-year-old uh, by Mr. Cockrell. Well, I don't think we've seen anybody uh, jump that any better this afternoon. And as we uh, look to uh, onto the screen, and just behind us, uh, Regis Houdon has completed his round with Van der Duplesse. Jumps off, tiring for both horse and riders, any five-star track, but particularly on a day like today, as, uh, as Tim Price was saying in his uh, interview. And uh, the uh, greatest uh, of aftercare will now be uh, taken of these horses. They will be cooled down. We uh, have learned so much technically over the years, the, uh, the correct way to uh, cool the horses down. And uh, they are still full of running at the end of these courses and uh, wouldn't be doing it if they didn't just uh, love this cross country phase. Well now, Gemma Tattersall, and just uh, pecks a bit on landing there, chilly night, but no problem for this combination. Chilly night, the chestnut by Chilly Morning. Chilly Morning, the sire of Chilly Night, owned by Christopher Stone, as is Chilly Night himself. Chris Stone, who's uh, done so much for eventing, including being the man behind with his wife Lisa, the man behind the event rider master series. Through the water goes Yemen and an unfortunate glance off. And uh, it was at fence 28, the uh, third and final water complex coming again. Well, Gemma was having to uh, work very hard to keep the horse moving forwards in uh, the way that she wanted Chilly Night to do. Well, popping very neatly over that second log, the second fence, the log go Elmar Lech and a rough diamond. Elmar, one of the very first professional event riders in Germany. Two times a member of the European German team. Well, we hear that uh, Gemma has negotiated the second element in that final water when uh, presenting for the second time. That's uh, great news for Gemma Tattersall and all the connections of Chile Night. Elmar Lech now making his way to the Chateau de Pau, the rapidly rising ground. Just uh, a few strides to the chateau at the top. Well, a masterful jump over that. And a wonderful trainer, Elmar, trained uh, so many riders over the years and uh, runs a uh, very, very, and has done for many years, a very successful breeding, training, and uh, dealing operation in Germany. Well, now we see Woden bouncing along with Sam Ackroyd in the plate. Absolutely loving it. That is the uh, the normal gait of Woden, and uh, no exception today, his uh, enthusiasm for this phase. So we continue with Sam Ackroyd to the double Leicester Lukepo. And another to turn left, one stride and then pop over that B 
the element. Well, we'll just uh, see if Elmar was okay going through the flags there. Of course, uh, it is up to the ground jury to decide if there uh, is any doubt. They did a great job there with that uh, right rein and balance in the uh, left leg in keeping the horse inside. But now to the Abri Akana. The ducks in the middle. Out they come. And this, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, this first water complex weaves its way in and out of that water. The uh, very experienced Elmar Leck has no problem whatsoever. Elmar Leck with a dressage score of 38.2, 33rd place after that first phase, making his way down, having negotiated the water along, uh, in fact, one of the tarmac roads at the side of the uh, huge race course and uh, training complex, the Demain de Serre. Sam Eckroyd into the second of the waters. Well, he really had to push for that uh, first stride. He was, uh, he took a big jump, and maybe that was the telltale sign. Just that quite couldn't quite uh, get that balance back and get the turn to the second element in the water. No problem this time. And beautifully over the roll top, the third element as well. No doubt about the. Uh, trickiness, the technical requirements on this Pierre Michelet track, but the master, particularly on these flat galloping tracks that we have here at Poe. And the tracks, the cross-country tracks at the different five stars around the world can be uh, very different, particularly if you compare a uh, relatively flat track like Poe to uh, say, for example, Burley, the rolling estate at Burley. Anabueto we see now. Anabueto with Quariano. Again, Sal Francais. And uh, the Sal Francais continue to be uh, so popular with the French team, with the French riders, and uh, really showing how important uh, perhaps the, the breeding has been within France itself for many, many years of the sport horse for uh, show jumping and for eventing. Wonderful system they've had in place. And uh, the Cell Francais continue to be the horses uh, ridden by so many of the French riders. Great shot there of them going over 4B. That arrow brush. Well, Elmar Lech having problems now out in the country in the middle of the race, racing training area. Rough Diamond glancing to the right off that arrow skinny. Plenty for these riders and horses to think about. And as we've seen uh, on several occasions this afternoon, when jumped by themselves, these uh, fences pose no problems whatsoever to these five-star horses when it comes to putting them together, particularly off a corner and certain striding, that is the challenge. Well, you saw uh, Elmar there just heading towards the trochaner, which is the, uh, the fence with the, the big log with the trochaner underneath it at the uh, very top of the course on the training area before they swing round and start to make their way back. Well, you saw Ono Boto there ask his horse for the stride, found it, got it. On this loop to come round to the water. 
Well, perhaps uh, a little miscommunication there between horse and rider. Wanted to go right, and arguably the horse obliging on and locking onto that horse, onto that uh, fence, just showing the ability and courage of uh, the horses, particularly at this level, having to take that loop and come back over that roll top into the water rather than turning right. Well, now Sam Aykroyd with uh, Woden and uh, scores to bring you very shortly. Sam Aykroyd and Woden, they uh, negotiate the final fence, the 35th fence. And uh, as they do, to confirm, Ascona M, Tim Price on a score of 44.5 in the clubhouse. Figaro van Hed, Bruxenhof, Tom McEwen on 74.3, on 42.4, having uh, incurred that refusal and uh, a couple of uh, and, uh, time penalties across country. Chile night, Gemma Tatisol, will they finish on a score of 78.3? Woden in the third, Sam Aykroyd. Latest uh, finisher on 85.8, uh, having incurred 51 penalties cross country, and Van der Duplessis and Regis Prudent for France on 89.1. Sam Eckroyd crosses the finish line with 20 jumping penalties in 12.33. Well, now we look at Sarah Way. Sarah Way and Dasset Cooley Dunn. Sarah, one of my uh, super guests here in the live stream booth over the last three days on the uh, amazing little Connemara cross. Dasset Cooley Dunn competed here last year and uh, completed in fine style with two very strong final phases. And as you can see, nothing but a little pony, Dasit Cooley done. Combination who were uh, well up the placings in the four star long format competition at Blenheim just a few weeks ago. Blenheim, uh, one of the three four-star long format competitions in the UK alongside Bramham and Blair Castle. That's it, coolly done. Takes a big leap over the chateau. Well, you wouldn't think he'd uh, taken a big leap at the bottom because the rhythm that Sarah and Dasit Kulidan got back, showing the nimble aspect of this pony and his pure ability was uh, tremendous as they took that B element. And a glance off another. This is out in the country once again. As we uh, watch these live pictures, on Abuato and Quariano. And unfortunately, 20 penalties. It is so far with that glance off to the right. Well, a big jump and perfectly within the flags this time for Anabueto and Quariano. Amal Ek, Diamond, uh, Rough Diamond, still going well. Well, in fact, uh, just as I say that, El Malek and Rough Diamond deciding, uh, in fact, they were, uh, they were eliminated. We didn't see uh, what was off the camera there, but unfortunately eliminated. So those three separate refusals at three fences, denoting a, at this level, denoting elimination, and three refusals at the same fence, denoting the same. So we're focused on Dasit Cooley Dunn and Sarah Way, who negotiate 9 A and B through the water for the first time, turn right towards 10. Left towards 11, the second of the Dutts. Every stride coming up magnificently for Sarah Way and Dasit Cooley Dunn through the water as they weave their way in and out of those fences. Sarah Way and Dasit Kulidan, the uh, fifth of the 
British riders to come forward. Well, so far, Sarah Way and Dasik Kuliga have done really consolidating their uh, fine performance here last year at Po. Sarah Way and uh, Dasit Kulidan now over the all-weather track, training track, now out into the country. Ears pricked. Dasit Kulidan fixed on the job in hand. Now to the Decours. That uh, bullfinch fence taking them out into the country. Once again, around that race course training fence. Arna Boiteau. Arna Boiteau, it is carrying the uh, 20 cross-country penalties. The French rider continues. Now through the two North American stations. Fence 28, the final of the water complexes. Pushing for that stride and got it over the second element of 28B. Huge cheers from the crowd around the water complex. Three previous winners here for the French on home turf. Three consecutive winners. Well, now we uh, come back to Sarah Way and uh, Dasit Cooley Dunn. Continuing uh, with a clean sheet cross country as it stands at the moment. And for any of you just joining us, you are live watching Le saint de Po, the second phase, the cross country phase of the CCI five-star five star long format competition. Well, we have a new starter, and it is uh, Marcelo Tossi and Glenn Fly for Brazil. Marcelo Tossi, part of the Olympic Brazilian team, turning uh, left towards eight. Those uh, upright rustic bars, which will take them on towards the water complex. Well, lots of questions in this water, but uh, in general, has jumped very well so far this afternoon in the sunshine at Po. Well, a bit steady, but neatly over that second swan, and then uh, saw a far better stride there, forward flowing stride at the roll top, taking the competitors away from the first water. Anna Boiteau, Corleano for France over the second. The last fence, the penultimate fence, that double jumping effort, those offset houses with the brush on top. And then the saint Etoile de Pau to finish. Anna Boiteau and Corleano for France are home. Avec ces 
Well, I'm delighted to, to join Tom McEwen into the live stream booth. Tom, an absolute pleasure to have you with us. Tom, you've uh, been around once, you've been around on your uh, first uh, horse that you brought forward to the dressage, the first horse you brought forward to cross country, Figaro van Head Bruxenhof. How did you feel your round went? So it's provided to be a really tough course to get round. Um, a lot of questions. Uh, it's nearly in three parts. Your first part before you hit the race course, and then out on the race course, a bit smoother, a bit of a different question, then back on again, and um, it gets really tough and technical again. The horses are getting, uh, it's very intense around the waters, especially in, in sort of in the park. Um, and obviously, as you can see where Alex is going now, the only way we've got to warm up is on the sand, and then all of a sudden you've set off on the grass and you're going cross country, just getting those horses into an early rhythm. Yeah, a real, a real challenge, uh, a real five-star track that uh, Pierre Michelet has, uh, has set for you all. Well, we'll just uh, turn our attention to Alex Bragg for Great Britain. Zagreb's been a wonderful servant to Alex over the years, hasn't he? Yeah, exactly, and maybe it's what we've been um, lacking after the first few horses is not the experience that Alex is bringing with, as a combination with his horse. Um, so for a lot of the riders, a lot of people would be glued, especially this one and Tim who went round earlier, especially for um, us that compete in Britain. Just watching the combination come down two and uh, jump over the B element of four. Yeah, exactly, so there's an option there. Um, I've been walking the right right hand side, but they are just propping on the top of that bank. Um, there are quite a few um, man made banks here with a lot of questions at the bottom of them. Similar questions, but they cut around the course, so it's about building confidence to go along. Yep, and uh, Tom makes uh, an excellent point there. It is about that confidence, it's all relative to the level and uh, the fences in front of you and continuing to build that confidence as you as you move around in the uh, in the horse so Marcelo Tossi and uh, Glenn Fly the Brazilian combination we now see uh, live in front of us and we're delighted that you've got your two arguably top horses with you and uh, absolutely delighted very unfortunate that you had to miss the FEI Longines European Championships with Toledo de Cursa but certainly uh, that is very much pose gain and uh, you lead with uh, Toledo yeah but as you can see it's certainly not a dressage competition it puts you in uh, great stead for the first part of the competition but um, actually as we're getting into the competition Marcel is doing a great job as he's going around and um, yeah time's going to be influential as well by the looks of it yeah, when Tim came off, he was saying about, he was uh, clear jumping, and he was saying uh, he didn't think there'd be too many uh, clears today when you uh, weigh everything up, put everything into the equation. Yeah, Sarah, look, we haven't seen much of her screen, but she's obviously jumping a great round. Um, and even though all the distances here ride really positively, and this is only a small horse, it might suit her in the fact that she can have the extra stride, but quite comfortably and quite positively at the same time. This has been a wonderful round for Sarah Way and Dasit Cooley done. Dasit uh, finishes in fine style, taking a huge leap at that uh, final fence lead. Thank you, 12, the bow, the roll top with the brush on top. What a round uh, for Sarah Way and Dasit uh, Cooley done. We'll just wait for their con uh, confirmed score to pop up, but still uh, trotting forwards with the. Uh, the warm down with his ears pricked and still looking as though he's on the bridle. Sarah Way does it, coolly done, completing. Uh, and here we see Alex um, on the bank coming down. Three sides to the skinny, that's how we walked it. It is very positive. As you can see with this older horse, it's just locking on and coming along. But if you can keep up this, these distances that he's riding, it'll make the time so much easier to achieve. Well, a great view there of this race course and uh, or this race course training area. You can see two horses passing there, one coming in to the inner part of the training area. First uh, fence coming up now. Seems an inviting brush that to take you out. He looked like he gave, saw a great shot as he came round to it. Um, yeah, so that is um, basically jumping a, a small chase fence the other way and built on it. Um, and then you wiggle around here to a very small box, but um, it's really built. I'm not the biggest person, but it's near enough as tall as me. Um, the horses ride it really well, and as you can see, touch the flag there. Um, and as you can see, you've got to wait again to come inside the next chase fence to the open ox or to the corner. Um, not distance or everything, we've sort of walked it on five strides when we've been walking around, but 
Um, it's a big old fence, this ox are coming in. And very on really well to that uh, second element. Yeah, very intriguing and really adding to the technical requirements going around those two training fences, steeplechase fences. Yeah, exactly. Um, he looks like he's in such a nice, positive rhythm. Um, and then probably one of the best cross-country riders there is with Izzy going out next. So um, for those people that sort of lack of just watching the first few go around and us all having a few problems, it's... Um, Watching these views sort of really shows how the how the course is jumping very well. Yep, we are uh, watching world class riders with Alexander Bragg out on Zagreb, Easy Taylor, and call me Maggie May, and sat uh, by me in the live stream booth. Another world class rider, Tom McEwen for Great Britain. So call me Maggie May, Easy Taylor. Well on their way. A combination who were 11th here last year. Really good across country. This uh, mare. Yeah, and as you can see, spirits horse, spirits rider, but even they had a little look at the top of that bank. Um, so even though we were really wanting to ride positively and fluently, um, it's probably tough. Um, this, obviously, TV doesn't always show everything, but this is a really st steep run down after this log into this water. And he rode it perfectly, but um, it's a little bit like they're so much concentrating on the steep bank and, and the lake that it's on the side of. They're not quite picking up the trip bar, but that was perfect. Yeah, and so important to get the view of you guys who've, uh, who've been out there. Back with Alex again. Alex Bragg for Great Britain. Well, that's it, cool it down and sail away. They had 19.6 time penalties uh, cross country to add to their dress article 42.2. And they are home after the second phase with a score of 61.8. And uh, they are the uh, second combination to come home so far without incurring any penalties for the jumping across country. And this looks like a great ride round. This is a fairly large open ditch. It has got a rise up to it, but um, it's, not, it's not far off what you see at Burnley, really. It's just true five-star track. It's jumped so brilliantly because you rise up to it. Um, for what is maybe not the most technical fence they've ever had this water jump, though, but it is massive. Um, and a lot of um, sort of... A lot of drop fences all the way around. As you can see with the older horse combinations, it's so balanced that you can ride so positively so well through there. Perfection through there for Alexander Bragg and uh, Zagreb. Well, now we see Marcelo Tossi and Glenn Fly. Literally just in front of us are over the final fence. Yeah, he's had a great run around. He's just had a bit of time. He's been clear over all the fences. So he's shown that it can all be jumped. Um, he's been positive in places. He's had a sit and waited for the other's next stride on others. Um, obviously, Izzy, we haven't seen it go through the water. Um, but it's looking good and positive. Looking good and positive, yeah. That was a great round from Marcelo Tossi and uh, Glenn Fly, incurring those time penalties, but uh, all importantly, clear jumping. Well, Izzy taking that direct route, 14 to 15, separately numbered fence at 14 and 50. And uh, so far, we've seen everybody take that uh, direct route. That is a, a wide roll top, isn't it? Skinny roll top at 15. It is, but um, sort of if you bid it, built it as an upright at the back, that's really where you'd be wanting to step off. We haven't seen this fence many times. But as you can see by Alex's great riding, it's nearly like you'd get an indoor eventing. It really comes up very tight. It's a bit obscure after being off the fence. And... Well, we catch up now with Alexander Bragg at uh, the water. Through the water they go for the final time. The uh, first and third water sharing the, the same stretch of water on that loop down towards the Witch's Brew. Yeah, Very appropriately designed for the uh, Halloween coming up. Yeah, just very, very quickly, going back, 
that is the first time we've seen that fence. And uh, when you look at it, it looks as though you're just uh, jumping two enormous five-star fences in your front garden with the rose garden in front of you. <laughs> it's not far off that. It's really tight. Um, the horses have just been opened up all the way around the race course. Um, they've then come back into the park section, which starts getting a bit tighter and twistier. Um, even though the ground pretty much is perfect here from all the rain we had on Tuesday, it is just a little bit slippy underfoot. Um, and just to get them connected to the first one, then realising that they are, like you say, running along the roses to turn straight back into the next one, um, you really do have to get them logged on. Well, now we see Shane Rose and Virgil for Australia. Shane uh, with me here yesterday afternoon in the booth. And uh, Shane brought Virgil over just uh, a couple of weeks ago. In fact, uh, I think uh, 10 days ago from Australia. Shane, who spent a year here and then uh, went back with his family. And uh, how wonderful it is that he's brought uh, Virgil here. No stranger to the five-star level, Virgil, with uh, two very good four-star short format finishes to his uh, name this year before coming here back to Europe to take part in the Po five star. Yeah, and then just behind Alex coming back, he's had a lovely smooth round, but he hasn't looked like he's been rushing, so it'll be really interesting to see his time when he comes. Oh, he's got 12 seconds to the last, he's going to be pretty much on it. Um, what an amazing round. Um, yeah, perfect. It first time we've seen someone inside the time. He looks so smooth, comfortable, easy. And yeah, made What a round. And Alexander Bragg and Zagreb showing it can be done. And uh, perhaps the experience really showing, but uh, you've still got to go out and do it. And uh, Alexander Bragg gave a masterclass around that in terms of uh, jumping the fences themselves, the time. What a, an incredible round from the British combination. And then we got Shane back at the first water. Perfectly through on the three strides, uh, really nice and positively. And this is a very tight turn back to this, to then try and really get down the bank and then over the swan again, and then up on the three strides of the skinny, and that's pretty much as good as you're going to see it all day. Jumped in as well as anybody today. As good as you're going to see, as Tom McEwen said. Well, now we turn to Izzy Taylor and call me Maggie May. That is a uh, very big fence, isn't it? Reminds me of the Cotsmoor Leap. <laughs> it's not far off, except, except for we've got the rise up to it on the ground, which does make it easier from a rider's perspective. Um, but from one big jump to another, it's another really big jump in with a bit of a drop. And it's another huge, great big skinny in the water. Huge leap over that uh, third element at the second of the water. Back to Shane Rose and Virgil. Yeah, looking class through there. Um, gone down there on the three strides, looking really comfortable. Um, we've just seen Alex go around so smoothly and in such a rhythm. This is looking like another one of those rounds. Well, Shane, a very uh, determined rider, and uh, he hasn't uh, come over here for nothing. That uh, determination really shining through when he was uh, with us yesterday afternoon, and how good it is that he has brought Virgil from the uh, Southern Hemisphere up for the Po five star. See him uh, just asking Virgil to extend that stride a little bit. And just as we see Shane Rose and Virgil, that head on view, confirmation that Alex Bragg and Zagreb for Great Britain have uh, taken the lead in the clubhouse at the moment. Nothing to add for the second phase cross country. They are home, looking forward to the show jumping tomorrow on a score of 28.8. That is uh, an impressive score for the two phases. Yeah, definitely. Um, just as Michael Owen starts, as you see, the first fence right next to the arena, and then pretty much 360 hairpin turn to go back again. It's just trying to establish that early rhythm with the horses, knowing that you want them to be positive and ready to go. Over that inviting log to get the horses into this rhythm, this galloping stretch. Yeah, and from a horse and rider perspective, this is a great camera shot, but it is a, a lady sticking out the roof of a car, driving along next door to you, which isn't quite normal. So when you weren't quite expecting it, it's just to get the focus. Do you think it was somebody taking a, uh, a video of you? Oh, I didn't know what was going on. I saw it <laughs> with Ludwig, but I wasn't right, really quite too sure what was going on. It is uh, Michael Owen and uh, 
Jim's pal. Well, just to quickly bring you more uh, scores, Glenn Fly and Marcelo Tossi for Brazil after that excellent round with no jumping penalties cross country. They uh, are in the clubhouse in third place at the moment on 59.9. 59.9, excellent round for the Brazilian combination. And Dasit Kulidan and Sarah Way home on that score of 61.8, 61.8, just the 19.6 time penalties to add. Is he through the third and final water? Call me Maggie May. Yeah, it's getting a new shot over there, and which is really upright fence. It's basically like a, I'm not really sure what you call it, a painting board. Um, it's been around for many years, but it's very upright. Late on in the course, horses are running free. We've got one big combination and a couple a couple more fences to go to get to home. So, yeah, yeah it's about the 10-minute point. Yes, that painting palette is very narrow, isn't it? Mm, very narrow, but it's not so much the width. It's, it's, it's more dimension of it as it being quite upright very and quite upright. at you. So a lot of respect required. So back to Virgil and uh, Shane Rose. Yeah, it looks like he's having a great round through the toes. Two huge wide skinnies. Um, it's basically like jump, cutting the table when they're down the middle and make sure everyone jumps to the same place. Um, and for me, I have been there many times. The last time I came was about three years ago, four years ago. And there's, well, it's incredible weather, but there's a lot of people out on track, um, especially around the two waters in the park. Um, obviously, he's coming to the, the, the water at the race course. Yeah, you were saying how intense it is and because of the nature of the, the setup of the Demand de um, It does get uh, pretty confined, doesn't it? Yeah, exa exa exactly. Well, Izzy, in those distinctive light blue colours on Call Me Maggie May, asks for the strides, gets it without any problem whatsoever. And, uh, they're home with uh, a few penalties for time. Wait for that uh, confirmed score to come through, but uh, another great round of cross country for Izzy Taylor and Call Me Maggie May. Jim's own, Michael Owen and uh, Jim's pal. Michael, based at Kelsall Hill in uh, Cheshire. Michael, no stranger to the five star level. The top 15 finish and the top 10 finish for his other very good horse, Bradley's Law. Good uh, string of horses. This time, uh, Jim's pal. Who, uh, yeah, another great ride down to that skinny um, over the bank, uh, out of the race course, across about four or five different uh, gallop tracks um, as you go out to the race course. Jim Spal, who uh, warmed up with a podium finish in the open intermediate at Kelsall Hill. On the uh, middle day of the three days of one day eventing in Cheshire at the end of September. Now towards the Hay des Course fence. Well, the crowds really, they're evident in evidence. As you can see, he's just setting up now for the, for the skinny box in the middle of the race course. Even though you would say, yes, it is a let-up fence and not the most testing fence, it does take the time because you need to prepare and um, get that turn on the outside shoulder coming around to the skinny. Um, and then a similar turn in question, but very different fence with this, the, the pinned open oxa to the, to the corner. Um, the corner's been hidden but sort of, sort of behind the laurel hedge uh, of a chase fence. So. Um, you're completely blindsided until uh, sort of till about here. Big jump over that first element. Just took the uh, right red flag out there. Well, my car is out there on the uh, racing. So he was uh, over it, but uh, yes. that's it for others to decide. Home, like um, and then this one, I can't completely see it on camera, but this is a big old um, dracaena over a ditch, and it's been really angled. Um, yeah, it's over one of their drainage ditches, a severe angle. Well, it certainly caught one or two out last year. Yeah, and then followed up by this next big hedge, which. Um, 
Yeah, wouldn't be seen out of place at Burley. So as we stay with Michael Owen, we'll uh, hopefully see this big hedge. And the super jump over there. Just uh, whisking the top of that uh, green privet, Jim's pal. So into the arena with those distinctive striped blue and white cross country colors. It is Shane Rose and Virgil. Well, just coming round to the final fence now here in the main arena, Shane Rose and Virgil. Another very similar round to Alex. This is just over the time, but another beautifully smooth round made it look, made it look very easy. Yeah, made it look very easy indeed. And uh, in so many sports, and particularly in equestrianism, uh, the uh, when you have it's going well for you, it looks very easy. But it's absolutely uh, top class exactly. and a great exactly. round for Shane Rose and Virgil. So they have a. Uh, Total score of 34.6 with just the 1.6 time penalties to add for cross country. Great round from the Australian combination. Well, a very grateful thanks to Tom McHugh. We wish you all the very oh. best. And just as I say that, we'll just uh, stick with uh, Michael Owen and Jim's pal just for one, uh, one moment. Yeah, they are two big boxes, and the first one has got a slight descent. There is a long route here. Um, I think you see most people say single route, but what a shame because after such an incredible round to have um, an unfortunate slip there. Well, once again, my very grateful thanks to Tom McCune. We wish you all the best with uh, Toledo de Curta and for the next 24 hours. Thank you very much. Michael Owen, that big brush fence with the uh, huge ditch in the middle of it. As Tom was saying just a few moments ago, the fact that uh, there is the sanded mound in front of it and after it means that it is uh, a little easier to jump than maybe the uh, Cotswold Morleap, for example, at Burley, a similar fence. Well, we see there Michael Owen and Jim's pal having jumped the first element at 24A, the first of the waters, which is a huge roll top. Just not able to uh, pick up that rhythm and that balance to turn right. It is a tight turn into the second element, and Jim's pal and Michael Owen deciding to call it a day. Charlotte East now and King Albert for. Great Britain. Well, unfortunately, there, Michael away Owen they go. After a little hitch coming into the second water, um, uh, didn't feel the horse quite right, so lifted his. So the time the starts to tick Shall away for this the combination. The they uh, come forward with a dressage Albert score of 38.3, which put them into. 35th place after the dressage. On the chestnut by Mayhill. over that second plane fence at two inviting fence just to get the horses in the rhythm white blaze of king albert and as Gemma Tattersall, who was uh, telling us yesterday afternoon in the booth out of the uh, very good mare King's Gem, the first horse to be brought forward this afternoon. The uh, mother also of the first horse to be brought forward this afternoon well, by Gemma Tattersall, chilly night. So King Albert at four, now at four B. Going well over the first four fences. Charlotte East and King Albert. So just to uh, have another very quick look at uh, the top uh, three, Zagreb and Alexander Bragg, clear within the time to stay on their dressage score of 28.8. Virgil and Shane Rose on a score of 34.6, having added just 1.6 time penalties cross country. Tim Price and Ascona M in uh, third 
place on a score of uh, 44.5. Marcelo Tossi for Brazil on a score of 59.9, having added 35 across country. And Saraway on Dasit Kulidan in that uh, fifth place with a score of 61.8, having gone clear jumping cross country with those 19.6 time penalties. That is the leaderboard for uh, those who have gone so far this afternoon in the second phase, the cross country phase of Les Anquetuel de Pau, the final five star long format competition in the Northern Hemisphere for 2019, as it has been traditionally annually for a number of years now before the five star event for 2019 concludes in Adelaide during November. Well, Charlotte East and uh, King Albert going well, certainly in a rhythm. And uh, King Albert looking as though he's uh, keen to move forward. You need that enthusiastic forward movement without fighting. And the first two elements at 9B, the two elements at 9B coming up so well. The very good looking sprite, spruce green, spruce within those. Ducks presented so well, just like the uh, Grand National Fences at Aintree. Charlotte East, King Albert, huge applause as they uh, make their way from the water. As they make their way to the agricultural chariot that uh, we could just see to our left. One of the large, wide, solid fences on this track. 35 fences. Thirty-five numbered fences. Charlotte Easton, King Albert, and taking that longer option, they've gone round through 180 degrees to take that upright brush fence and appreciation from the crowd as they do so. It certainly worked for Charlotte. Well, now the representation for the continent of North America, and it is Holly Jacks and more inspiration. More inspiration and Holly Jacks who competed at the Kentucky three-day event in 2017 and also last year. Owning more inspiration with, along with uh, Bruce Smithers. This 14-year-old gelding by Inspired Prospect. And that uh, business that Holly Jacks and Bruce Smither run over in the States. And they are here to take their place across the Atlantic at Poe in late October and a very worthy representation from the continent of North America. Fine horse, more inspiration. And making nothing of 4A and B. Holly Jacks just uh, sitting tall, keeping that balance, waiting for that jump and that stride to come to her at 4B. So Charlotte East and uh, King Albert out in the country. A combination who had a dress off score of 38.3. Well, both horse and rider looking very happy with this round. Charlotte giving the praise to King Albert, giving him a good uh, pat down the neck. As Tom was saying earlier, Tom McEwen, my first guest here this afternoon, it's so important that it's relative to the level over these fences that the horse continues to gain confidence over the track. Asking these horses to uh, not quite jump into the unknown, but uh, we're asking them to 
jump fences they haven't seen before. Well, really, more inspiration arguably there saying, let's go, Holly, and uh, saw the stride for Holly and went a very genuine horse there inside the flags, almost taking a stride out, but saw it and went for it. And really good understanding between Holly Jacks and the 16-year-old. The 14-year-old, more inspiration, good understanding combination. We've been together for a long time. Many years. Take 9B round to the skinny row at 10. Drop down to the water. Left to 11. And the three strides once again. Absolutely delighted with uh, those jumps in and out of the water and through the water. Holly Jacks on more inspiration for Canada. Well, we're staying with Holly Jacks and more inspiration to the agricultural cars. Just taking a uh, steadier canter gate up towards 14. Holly Jacks and more inspiration. But Absolutely no problem taking that direct route. Holly understanding the horse, knowing what was needed there. That fence on the top of the mound before dropping down to 15, the separately numbered fence. Charlotte East now and King Albert. Well, another just having to come round to have a look. In fact, this time at the first element uh, it, it was the, uh, the second element, just taking a good run at the second element in the water, the second water. Well, obviously making the right decision there. Charlotte East and King Albert Charlotte in her first five star. Safely over that wide roll top in the middle of the water when asked for the second time, King Albert. Well, now Felix Vogue and the former racehorse, Archie Rocks, the thoroughbred on course. Dressage score 31.6. Good score in the dressage for Felix Vogue and Archie Rocks, putting them into 10th place. And we can see there a uh, shot of exactly where our rider was in red at the Chateau de Pau. Felix Vogt for Switzerland. Chateau de Pau then down to the B element at the Chateau. Uh, this is uh, the second time we've seen this this afternoon. The offset skinny brush fences in front of the uh, rose garden in front of them and how well Charlotte East jumped that with King Albert and we catch up with them now running in between the uh, North American West stations turning left towards 28A the final water two jumping efforts no problem at all, going so well, this combination. In fact, uh, they are going well, of course, they have that 20 penalties, but they've picked the rhythm up so well on their five-star debut. Well, they are going to be an awfully long way off the time. We saw that time ticking off to uh, nearly the uh, zero point and a slip. That's the, uh, the second horse we've seen slip at that uh, point as they take the rustic bars at eight. And this time, Felix Vogue and Archie Rocks. Well, we all love to see a former racehorse out, particularly at the top level of eventing. Obviously, well suited to the cross country element, but nevertheless, have to be the right sort of horse to be trained. 
particularly to get to the top level of eventing as we see Felix on the former racehorse seamlessly through the water and then of course when it comes to the show jumping and the first face dressage well it takes a very special former racehorse uh, to do that but we see that with uh, the likes of Arctic Soul, Gemma Tattersall's uh, top horse <laughs> Flying there over Le Palois before the second of the water complexes, 24A, B and C for Holly Jackson, more inspiration. Well, jump that as well as anybody today. Big, bold jumping by more inspiration. Miss Gelding by inspired prospect. Well, now we see the aerial view of the painting pallet fence again. This time Charlotte East and King Albert popping over that fence. And we catch up with her now in the arena. Charlotte East and King Albert on their five-star debut. Applause from everybody, not just the British supporters. Applause from everybody as they come here into the arena. They take the penultimate two jumping efforts at 34. Those offset houses with the brush top. The, the applause continue as they uh, turn left in front of the VIP marquee towards the Saint Quetoile de Pau. Final fence. Over they go. Well, it will be a cross-country score of uh, 77.6 for this combination, but I'm sure that Charlotte will be delighted on her debut to have got round this very technical and demanding uh, Pierre Michelet track over the uh, galloping ground here at Pau. Sarah Bullimore now and Compierre are away. Well, Sarah, a specialist here at Poe. Sarah, who uh, just two years ago missed out to a win on Rêve de Rue. To the uh, home victor, Gwendolyn Defer, by the smallest of margins, and on during that uh, year here at Poe in the five star. Sarah was also in the top 10 and uh, just outside on uh, her third horse. And, uh, enjoying a great year. Fourth at Burley this year, fifth at Le Moulin on Rêve de Rue, but this time with uh, Combierre. Combierre, a horse that uh, Sarah came in and talked about over the B element at four, sat there, asked the horse a question, and the horse obliged. Well, we'll be back with Sarah Bullimore. But we turn our attentions once again to Felix Vogg and Archie Rocks. Archie Rocks. Felix Vogg, about to come into view. Now, this is the uh, tricky 21. Tw and an unfortunate stop there because it was a good jump over 21A. They had the balance, they had the rhythm, they had the turn, but unfortunately, those hind legs going from underneath. Archie Rocks coming down again to the second of those wide roll tops at B. Well, this is Holly Jacks and more inspiration for Canada. They're, uh, Still going there into the time penalties now. You can see that at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Nearly uh, 10 penalties to add for that. Point at four of the penalty for every second over the time. Holly Jacks and more inspiration. Now we are back with Sarah Bullimore and uh, Compierre over the upright, Rustic at eight. So Sarah came into the booth talking uh, about the uh, competitors who uh, came after her in the dressage, but uh, talking very much about Compierre, this uh, young horse, exciting young horse. So a completion 
just behind us, but we'll bring you more news of that uh, shortly. But it is. Sarah Bolivar, who's just had to take a turn in the water over uh, 12, uh, over 11. Well, what a shame. Well, here we are with Holly Jackson, more inspiration, going over that final fence. What a uh, great round. They've incurred time penalties, but it is clear jumping. And Holly Jacks absolutely delighted with more inspiration. They're over from Canada to compete here at Poe. No stranger to the Kentucky Five Star, but here they are waving to the crowd an absolutely elated Holly Jacks. So that uh, gives them a total of 60.4, 60.4 for the first two phases. So the 12-year-old Dutch warm blood compere, still a relatively unexperienced. So much to come for compere and Sarah Bullimore, who now uh, has a great string of horses as they uh, move off into the country. Kirsty Johnson and the classic The Faithful well, certainly wasting no time on this first galloping stretch to fence number three, the first of the wide tables. As we come back once again to Felix Vogg, who sets himself up for the big log at 28B, and unfortunately just not able to get the stride, the footing and the balance going through the water. And uh, Felix and Archie coming to a uh, standstill in front of the B element. And unfortunately, with the parting of the wave, of the waves between horse and rider, that uh, denotes elimination, unfortunately. Sarah Bullimer and Compia now in view. That unfortunate turn in the water that has given her those 20 penalties. What a shame for uh, Compierre and uh, Sarah Bullimore. So you can see in the bottom right hand corner the dressage score 27.7, the cross country penalties as they stand at the moment. Therefore, the running total of 47.7. So we stay with Kirsty Johnson, and uh, we've actually gone back to Sarah Bullimore. So Kirsty Johnson and Classic are now back in view. Kirsty, who's family, breed the opposition horses. Been a good year for Kirsty and Classic. Classic with, Kirsty with several good horses. Was a member of the British Nations Cup team just a few weeks ago. And once again, we see the uh, red circle denoting that the competitor we see in front of us is at uh, the water at 10, turns to 11. And popping in the exit, so four strides it was there for Kirsty Johnson and Classic in between 11 and 12. I'm well, just seeing Kirsty Johnson and Classic, unfortunately, running out. At, uh, and in fact, uh, my apologies, they are uh, over 7B. We'll leave it to the uh, judges to decide uh, what happened there. And uh, of course, 15 penalties available or uh, 
if it is a, uh, a run out and the horse represents 20. Well, it gives me uh, great pleasure to welcome Tim Price into the uh, booth. Tim, a very warm welcome. You've been round on, you were very early to go on Ascona M. It was a great round. You were the first to uh, jump clear, a few time penalties. Uh, we heard your interview as well, your live interview just when you came off. Great round. Yeah, no, thank you. It was, uh, it was hard going out a little bit blind, not knowing how the course is uh, going both with the jumps and the time, but um, she's a feisty mare, so I've got to take my time with her, but I'm really pleased with the way she came home. Wonderful, Matt. Yeah, no, it was a super round. It really was. She looked happy, relaxed, in a rhythm all the way around. Yep. So we're just uh, looking at uh, Kirsty Johnson with uh, Classic the Sixth. We were talking earlier about having to weave your way left and left again. Yeah, around it's, those it's nice to get out onto the, onto the race course uh, to have a good open gallop. Um, but you've got a little bit of weaving to do to negotiate the little hedges and, and whatnot. But uh, it's, it's nice to get out there finally after a bit of an intense patch before that. Sarah Bullimore and uh, Compierre. Well, unfortunately, the uh, 20 penalties, as we've seen, incurred at the first water. Next of the big wide fences, a feature of uh, Po, those big solid yeah. wide fences, as they were last year. I think this year in particular it's bigger and wider yeah. in places. It's a, it's a true five-star uh, competition. And it keeps coming like that all the way home. We see Sarah, did you say she's had a run out? Yeah, she had to uh, make a turn. Oh, and there's another. During the water, the first water, but unfortunately the same again, glancing off the B element of 28 in the final water. It's just, it's intense. You know, you, you've got question after question. So just when you think you're on top of the job, something disrupts your rhythm, and then it, and it's your job as a rider to get the horse back and the flow back into your round. Otherwise, it catches up with you again. And as you say, this is a true five-star track. Correct. It's challenging all the way you know as we're seeing we've got classy riders out here today with some experienced combinations and it's uh, definitely taking its toll so Remy Pulo, the next of the French riders out on the track as we see Sarah Bullimore at Compierre on the second presentation at the B element of 28 through the final water making it uh, successfully over the 12-year-old uh, Compierre, just taking it uh, steadily, Sarah. Obviously, the yes. time of uh, no consequence now. Can we catch up with her here? Then uh, here again with the aerial view of the artist's palette, the painter's palette. Very upright fence is that, isn't it? Needs respect. Very much so. You're coming home, you're trying to make up a little bit of time, and then you've got a very vertical... Um, paint chart there to, to negotiate and um, it does take a lot of respect. It's good, got away with that. And uh, Remy Pillow and uh, Toshik Doulevant. Yeah, I think that's it. proving to be quite testing that, that 7B element, the corner. Uh, it comes up quite early on and it's a proper distance of three strides. You've got to really commit, otherwise you find yourself a little bit in no man's land between two distances. So it takes real decisive action. Yes, and no alternative until we get a little further on in the course. Well, straddling that a bit, tall sheep do the bomb, yeah. but, but over, that's the important yeah, thing. Gave the swan a bit of a hard time there. Thanks, to clear. Actually handled. Oh, great job. Well he, ridden. He really Very got well things ridden. sorted there and, and, and got through nicely. Positivity, understanding between horse and rider. Great uh, combination there from the French Rémi Pilot with Tol Chic du Levant. We're now with Kirsty Johnson and Classic the Sixth for Great Britain through the second of the waters. Yeah, it's Kirsty in this, this big water combination. I mean, walking it, it looks quite straightforward, but to ride, boy, it's a big jump in, and you've got all that expression of, of power to then take through the water and do something with it. It, it actually rides much more difficult than I was anticipating. Well, Sarah Pullimore and Compierre we see in our pictures having finished 78.4 after those uh, two separate individual runouts on course. Time penalties, of course, as well. So uh, 78.4 cross country penalties, 106.1 the total two face score for Sarah Pullimore and Compierre. 
So if you're just joining us, we are delighted you are. You're watching live pictures from the saint Catoual de Pau here in the beautiful south, southwest of France. And it certainly is very beautiful this afternoon. A very warm autumn sunshine. And uh, I'm joined by Tim Price, world number three and a prolific uh, winner at the advanced levels, at the uh, four-star and five-star. And, and Tim, you and Janelle, Tim's wife uh, Janelle, both having had uh, amazing success, particularly in the European five-stars over the last three years, including winning Le Moulin yourself this year. It's been, it's been a good couple of years. Uh, it's been a long time coming. We've been over in the UK and the Europe uh, for you know well over 10 years now. So uh, good horses and a good support is what it's all about. It, well, that's Ludwig here. He's on a second horse, and uh, I really fancy these two. He's had he's had a look at the course. Okay, he had a fall out on the race course earlier with his first horse out, but this combination I think it will really suit. He picks up his fences out of the gallop, and you can see the way he's set off. He, he means business here. So, Balamis ranked 19 after the first. Uh, Dressage phase, 33.7 their penalties to give them that uh, placing beautifully over Beautiful. four p. Perfect. Yeah. Opted for the five strides. Some are going down there on four, um, as did I, but he did it in beautiful balance, not disrupting the, the speed. So he knows what he's about. And it, it's that kind of partnership between horse and rider that, will, that should see you right around a course like this. And Ludwig with uh, three horses here, including uh, El Kazir SP, who he was uh, third on at the Europeans. Yep. Good year for Ludwig. Yep. Eighth at, I, sorry, I, I correction there. Eighth at uh, the Europeans and eighth at Burley. Well, we see a problem for Remy Pilot and Tol Chic du Levant. And we catch up with him now. Got underway once again. And, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, the chicane where he had the problem. It's a difficult question. It's just a, a log over a ditch, but it's on an angle, uh, quite an acute angle actually, and it just really takes some proper placement. And you're trying to do that out of the gallop. So he's obviously. We were saying earlier we saw a couple of problems there last year. Um, it's uh, it's not as another fence that is not as easy as it uh, as it looks. Rami Pilo and Til Tol Chic du Levant at uh, Vertical du Casino de Pau. Let you pronounce that one. <laughs> well, now this loop from seven. That loop from seven and eight that brings the competitors through to nine, nine A and B through the water. A little bit of a twist there from Ludwig's second horse, Balamist, but uh, cleverly got yeah. over. Beautiful. I mean, he's just, you can see they're on the job, okay? That wasn't the ideal approach down to the first swan, but they both handled it and they came out of there, you know, flying away. Kirsty Johnson for Great Britain Classic, the sixth. Not far from home in front of the VIP marquee here in the main arena. Turn left before Les Anker, Dwell de Pau, the final fence, the roll top with the brush on top. Over they go. And uh, Kirsty Johnson and Classic are, uh, are home. A total of 64.8, giving them uh, a cross country. 64.8, the cross country penalty. Oh! Well, unfortunately, Ludwig Senestol and Ballon Mist part in company at 15. Those separately numbered fences, 14 on the top of the hill that you can see in front of you. A big fence then dropping sharply down to the uh, wide, skinny roll top at 15. But thankfully, both horse and rider absolutely fine. It, uh, it was jumping so well, but it just shows even a horse that is uh, going so well on the course. Yeah, it's, it's one of those falls, both are ep horse and rider, absolutely fine. That's the main thing. It was just the way it was. It's a big three strides. He was between three and four. Oh, what a shame. But the Huge shame for uh, Ludwig, but uh, he has. He's already been out this afternoon on his uh, first horse, the 10-year-old Matt Salonet, and comes out. Last of all to go here in the cross country on El Kazir SB. Isabel English now and Feldale Mouse. Isabel English 
for Australia. Came over in 2016, brought the uh, Minnie Mouse, as he's uh, known, Feldel Mouse, by the finest Coromara stallion in Australia, ho over with her for six years, for uh, three years, correction, with the great uh, Michael Young as a working pupil for uh, Michael, and uh, currently with Kevin McNabb down in the south of England. Yeah. And, and what a cracking combination, these two. You know, I think she was unlucky. She went to Burley to have a, have a go there, and for one reason or another, she was unable to, so here she is, rerouted. But these guys have been together for a long time, as you say, and, uh, and I think this track would suit them. Uh, you know, Compact well, little mare, she's not big at all, pint size in fact, and uh, yeah, like I say, these two know each other really well. So, well, luck. it certainly suited uh, Sarah Way's horse, Cat Dasset, uh, coolly done. Beautiful. So, we will be back with uh, Isabel English as we come back to Remy Pilot and uh, Tol Chic du Levant at 28. Double jumping effort. Well, genuine horse there, not yep. really going forward, but uh, our French rider kept him straight between the flags. Uh, creeping down the hill there, but like you say, genuine, and uh, yeah, he's, he's not far from home now, so a couple of serious, com well, was one serious combination in particular. And we catch up now with Rémi Pilo and Tol Chic du Levant at the Painter's Palette, beautifully over there. Jumped very well this afternoon, that Painter's Palette. Well, a shot again of the one of the marquees around the main water complex. And this water complex is uh, very large, only a portion of it being used yeah. for as the uh, first and second jumping efforts for this track. Very impressive feature. This will be interesting to see what she does here. She's on the... Uh, wow. This, this is a little horse just showing how, when done correctly, that three strides can be made to look easy. It's very well done. Another to lose their balance, uh, to, to lose their hind legs a little bit going round that corner. Well, no problem at all. Regain the balance and the rhythm to take those upright, rustic bars down to the water. Perfect. Yeah. Magnificent. I almost say that was textbook. I mean, just poetry. And she stayed on the inside line. It's come, it's Remy. Made it home. Remy Pilo and Tol Chica du Levant. Well, not far from home now. We were saying that just a few moments ago. Here they are. Taking that uh, final fence. They pass directly in front of us. Dolchic du Levant, Remy Pilot on board for France with a cross country score of 52.8, 86.1. Their first two phase score putting them into 33rd spot at the moment. And importantly, they are home. Huge applause from the home crowd here in the southwest of France. Isabel English, that uh, red dot coming up in f on your screen showing just where Isabel English is in terms of a uh, visual image of the course. Isabel English and uh, Feldau Mouse. Yeah, and she made a great decision there for the four strides coming down to the skinny. Uh, you know, she's shown scope in some places, but she also knows just where to push it and where not to. So that was a great display of, of partnership again. Well, no strangers.
So after the live interview, we're uh, back with you on track, and it is Isabel English. Oh. Well, that was so unfortunate for Isabel and Felder Master. We're going so well. Oh. Just glancing off the uh, B element of that double jumping effort. Fence in the middle of the training area, out in the country. Uh, it was hard to know what quite went wrong there. It was, she jumped in well and then lost her line a little bit. Well, we're with Roskanta and Jen Shira. Wow, what a jump there over yep. 4B. Yep. No loss of rhythm or stride whatsoever. Roskanta, the reigning world champion, a title that Ros won in Tryon in North Carolina in the United States of America last summer, part of that uh, gold medal winning team at the World Equestrian Games. Well, we're back now with Isabel English and Feldale Mouse. And for uh, all our viewers, and particularly if you are uh, new to eventing, as we saw, as we've seen on a few occasions this afternoon, when jumped by themselves, these fences are nothing to these five-star horses, but it's the combinations, it's the technicality of the strides in between the fences, the gradients, etc. It is, and it's also the time, you know, this show has proven to be tight, so it's putting us in additional pressure. You know, when you've got to take these jumps on with a bit of speed, it, yeah, that's a good effort, yeah. Beautiful three strides for Roz Cantor at 7B. Zanchera, what a wonderful servant yeah. over the years, and uh, still not very old, so much ahead of Zanchera. Fifth here last year, seventh the year before for Zanchera and Roz Cantor. A combination who uh, warmed up with that advanced win at Little Downham. Yeah, and Roz is off a bit of form with her, with her good horse having a win at Ballandinas. So she's come back from, from having a baby very well, it has to be said. This is looking good. Watch them go through the water. Little, Super again. A little chop step coming down into the water, but it was only a horse being careful with their foot placement, and it worked out really well, and uh, she's galloped away looking really, really good. Well, now to the uh, tricky 21, and Feld Elmaus taking the direct route, and we see the nimble athletic nature of the uh, little horse, Feld Elmaus, there. Yeah. Getting it very close to that to B element at 21. Wow! I mean, this, was this little horse just showing all the ability and the you know, playing with the big guys here. It's you know, fit two of this little horse into some of the other ones in this, this class, but boy, just making that distance so easy. And we've all done that on our little ponies when we were younger, but to see that at the five-star level is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, she'll she'll be kicking herself because it looked like just a bit of a miscommunication at the corner earlier in the track. And, uh, you know, she's going to carry on, obviously, and she's probably going to come home and, uh, and be regretting <laughs> this little moment they had. But it's great to watch. Now through these, over these big three fences in the second water. Big, inviting fences, but big they are. And as Tim was saying, after that first fence, where you have to keep the power moving forwards. It's then about uh, retaining the balance and the control to turn right over the fence in the water. Staying with Australia, we've got Kevin McNair. And as uh, Kevin moves away, just to let you know that Holly Jackson, more inspiration, they are uh, in that fifth place as it stands at the moment. 60.4, great uh, round. So we are back with Kevin McNabb for Australia. Well, a fence that we've talked about on several occasions this afternoon. No problem at all for this little horse in front of the, uh, the roses there. I was saying earlier, it's almost as though you're jumping uh, in your front garden. That is amazing to see these uh, yeah. five-star horses do that. Yeah, no, and it's so well presented all the way around here. And the crowds today, it's it's packed, you know, and you do really notice that as you're galloping around. Um, but no, she's handling this course other than the one moment beautifully. She's full of running and uh, and just making it look easy. Ross Cantor and uh, Zanshira. Zanshira. 
and we catch up with her now. She is making her way. Yeah, she's really asking everything she can of, of Zinchera. He's, uh, he's not been known to be the fastest, but she's really riding out of a super rhythm all the way so far and taking advantage of the open galloping out here. And uh, I wouldn't say she's too far away from the time, actually. She's looking really good. Yeah, and uh, Zanshira and Ros Kanter here on the inner loop within the country racing uh, training area. This is a right-handed galloping uh, right turn to these big log piles. You know, they're skinny, but they're very, very deep and you know wide, so that they are proving to take some jumping, as we've seen. So. so now Kevin McNabb and Scudero, 1918, Don Quida. Coming up to the uh, next at seven of the double jumping effort fences. A fence that has caused a few problems. Takes out that uh, left handed white flag. But uh, no, he opted for the four strides. And uh, you know, you've got to make those four strides fit. And you do just flirt with the flag a little bit more as a tendency when you do that. But he knew what he was doing. He's a very experienced man on, a, on the back of a horse. And uh, he's. He's out to do well here, obviously. Scuderio 1918, the uh, Italian footwear company with an increasing string of horses. Don Quidem owned, uh, ridden, my apologies, by Kevin McNabb. Well, just having to, the horse just having to screw itself a little bit over that uh, duck in the middle, but over they went. Just a, a great piece of riding by Kevin there, the way that he, he had to change his mind in the first part of the water and add a late fourth stride and then sit out that twist through the horse and he did it just just magically, he just showed his, his experience there and his ability. It's great to watch. Yes, in any sport it really just shows when uh, problems start to appear how that sportsman, that athlete, sportswoman reacts to it. The big striding Zanchera, Ross Cantor sits tight, pushes on. Well, we see Isabel English and uh, Feldel Maus into the arena. The little horse who's uh, shown huge athletic prowess over the 35 fences here at Poe, over the five star track, comes round to the five fence, the appropriately named Les Saint Quetuel de Poe. Over they go. They have incurred 64.8 cross country penalties, but they are home and they have uh, completed the second phase of. Les Saint de Po 2019. Well, my very grateful thanks to Tim Price. It's, uh, as always, wonderful to have you. Thank you so much for your uh, insight. Always just uh, such a great chat with you, Tim, and uh, we wish you well. You're in the clubhouse with a great uh, two-faced score on the lovely mare, uh, Ascona M, and you have Wesco to come. Yep, thank you, Nick. So I'm going to go and hop on Wesco, and um, thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Ross Cantor and Zanchira through the water. Well, Ross Cantor and Zanchira, but uh, we were talking about other, Ross's other uh, top class horse on whom she won the World Championships, All Star B. Well, that's uh, had that very good win at Ballandenisk at the four star level. That's six weeks ago. Kevin McNabb, no problem at all at that corner, the second element. B out in the country before turning left towards the Tricana. Well, we've seen a couple of problems here this afternoon. The big log sat diagonally across the Tricana itself. Virginia Howe for Great Britain and Adalgo de Windsor. Over the B element at four. Part of this large British contingency that we always see down here at Poe. Well, just to confirm that Alex Bragg and Zagreb lead the way at the moment for those in the clubhouse after the second phase on that. Uh, Dressage score 28.8. .8. Nothing to add cross country as we see Kevin McNabb and uh, Quidam once again. They have a clean sheet 
jumping. And we see now the picture of Ros Kanter and Zenshira moving into the arena. Always a happy stamping ground for Ros Kanter here at Po, as are so many of the top competitions around the world for the world champion. Coming forward towards this final fence, wonderfully balanced on a horse. What a great shot over that final fence. Ros Kanter and Zenshora, they just have six time penalties to add. They have a score of 33.2 and puts them into ninth place as it stands at the moment. Super round from Ros and Zenshira. Well, we go back to Another British rider, Virginia Howe and Andalgo de Windsor. They uh, continue their way now down into the first water, holding the stride between the two elements of 9A and B on that right-handed turn. And the three strides coming up magnificently for Virginia Howe and Andalgo de Windsor as they uh, take that fence number 12, having uh, taken the rising ground out of the water itself. Well, we stick with Virginia Howe over the agricultural cart. Is uh, also going well for her. She's clear at defence number 13. Kevin McMahon also going clear. The horse looks, uh, Long, straight, yeah, galloping stretch up towards uh, 14. And, uh, Virginia Howe on the. Well, just. Uh, Again, an horse, another horse we've seen twisting as it takes the, the fence, but uh, no problem in terms of uh, getting over that fence at 15. But uh, maybe just a little bit tight in, but cleverly over. And I'll go to Windsor. We're back with Kevin McNabb now, Scudero Don Quidam. And now we catch up with him out over the big wide table. We'll take this combination down through the two North American stations. Wonderful design, wonderful thought as always to the five star track. No finer way to see it than in the gleaming and very warm autumn sunshine in the southwest of France. Over 28A, down into the water, finds the stride and jumps it as though it wasn't there at 28B. Great sir. spectacle, jumped that as well as anybody today, Kevin McNabb. Well now, another to set off in uh, fine, forceful style along the first galloping stretch. Andrew Stabowski and FRH Bats Avidon come to the third fence. And Andreas was uh, with me yesterday afternoon in the booth, and he was saying that uh, this may well be FRH but Avedon's final outing at the five-star level. It may be his uh, final outing altogether, and uh, wanted to bring him somewhere where uh, he had the best chance. Well, he's brought him uh, two. He knew he was ready. Great results this year and uh, knew he was uh, on song and ready for the Po five star. So over 4B. Well, Virginia Howe and the Delgo de Windsor going very smoothly over that uh, fence before the big trachana. No problem at all, turning right and then left over the second element. Catching up with them now over the privet. Virginia Howe and Adalgo de Windsor on that uh, loop, now within the race course training area itself. Well, another uh, super guest here with me in the commentary box. 
And it is Alex Bragg who uh, sits in a uh, very handy fifth place at the moment on Zagreb. He looked superb out there. And uh, you went round without any penalty whatsoever. And you're uh, in the clubhouse on your on your dress art score of uh, 28th of 28.8. Uh, in fact, uh, of course, uh, you are in first space at the moment. My apologies. <laughs> And the uh, finishing score for Kevin McNabb and Scudero, 1918 Don Quidam, is just 10.4 cross country penalties to add to their dressage score. Well, my apologies, uh, our apologies there. I hope you can hear Alex Bragg now. Oh, am I there? You are there now. That's so great. Alex is, uh, is with us now. Alexander Bragg and uh, Zagreb, they sit in uh, first place in the clubhouse at the moment with a seamless cross-country round here at Le saint quitoile de Pau. They finished that second phase on their dress article of 28.8. Apologies for that, Alex. You are now live with us. Super. No, I had a wonderful ride. Zagreb is a very experienced horse and uh, he did a super job with what is proving to be a very technical and tricky cross-country uh, here at Poe. But um, I'm sure there's some riders later on, which I'm very excited to see, which is going to do, uh, do a good job. I'm sure, but uh, it's so important that you have got in home with no penalties cross-country, because that is, a, that is a good score. It's big, it's technical, as you say. Yeah, so no, definitely. We were seeing pictures there of uh, Andreas uh, Debalski. In fact, we stay with Andreas now. Great shot of him galloping directly towards us on the screen. Andreas is a very experienced jockey, you know, and um, this is a very experienced horse. So hopefully they can have a, a great run. Uh, it's going to be one of their final runs, I think. So uh, look forward to him coming through the finish line uh, pretty quickly. Yeah, quite a weekend uh, for Andreas on this uh, lovely horse with all that experience. We'll come back to that combinations very soon. Virginia Howe and Adalgo de Windsor continuing to go so well. No penalties jumping cross country. They uh, go so well in front of those, uh, over those two offset skinny brushes before turning right and over the big table over that uh, big solid house just rattling the top of it there alex yeah you can see that the horses are just starting to fatigue at this point and that is a very very big fence off the turn so she's going to have to get the concentration of the horse this is quite a four a short four strides after this drop good riding good riding yeah she kept the horse straight kept his focus between the flags and he made the adjustments that were necessary and uh, did a great job so yeah she'll be she'll be pleased his punch so far just needs to get him home yeah saw the stride after it and got it so uh, going well we'll be back uh, with that British combination very soon as we go to Ellie Jane Costello and Westmuir quality well this a uh, combination from Scotland based near Aberdeen Ellie Jane Costello Westmuir quality in the uh, top five this year, the CCI uh, long format four star at Blair Castle at the end of August. One of only uh, three four star long formats in the UK. And we're back now with Andreas Dabowski, FRH Butts Avedon, this hugely experienced rider at the uh, five star level and at the team level for Germany. Two Olympics for Andreas for Germany, and this year part of the German winning team that were victorious on home ground at Le Moulin at the FEA Longines European Championships. It looks to be going very, very well, actually. I think at this point in the course, we've all got our minute markers, and I was up on my minute markers by a good 10 seconds, but I think the final part of the course really eats into that spare time. So you go oh, sit up, Ginny. Oh, that was such a shame. a shame. Such a shame. Just couldn't quite get it back in time. Yeah, I mean, she'll be gutted with that 20 penalties. 
at that. Well, it's funny, that is numbered separately. If they haven't deemed her to have presented, she may get away with it. So it'll be interesting to watch the scoreboard with that. Yeah, and the fence we haven't really seen this afternoon, and, uh, and, and thank you for explaining that because, uh, yeah, it is, a, it is a fence we haven't seen, and it's really interesting. You come down off the big roll top at the top, don't you? Yeah. And then turn sharp right to the, the B element. There are the alternatives at B and C. There are. I mean, and when we were all walking the course, it, it was something that all the riders have been talking about late on in the track, and Pierre Michelet himself said this is going to be one of the most influential combinations of the course. So it's nice to see somebody go through it. Um, it's you know just a shame for Ginny to have that little stumble, but someone wake the grand jury up and get them to have a look. <laughs> <laughs> Virginia Howe and Andalgo de Windsor are now over that final fence. Well, what a what a shame! It is uh, a total of 30.8. It is a total of 30.8, and uh, for the addition to the dressage score for uh, Virginia Howe, but a great uh, round nonetheless. Well, oh dear, well, maybe the telltale time was at, at that uh, fence number 11 in the water. I think she got lucky, yeah. She just knifed in a little bit on the corner and the horse was unbalanced to stay inside the flag and then it didn't quite get its focus on the final element there and uh, she paid the price. I think this is uh, a key feature of this course at Poe is it's an accumulative effect of the, all the combinations as well as the elements within them. You have to stay very, very focused and concentrated and it's exceptionally hot here. I don't know if you've spoken about that, Nick, but I have. It is, the, the, it is, it is warm, it is warm, yeah. Uh, and, you know, with the welfare of the horse, obviously, absolute uh, prime uh, top of the uh, agenda for everybody. But these horses coping uh, extremely with it. But And you ride accordingly. And if you feel your horse is uh, just struggling a bit and from the start or further round, you will react accordingly. Yeah, that's a very important thing uh, to say. And all of us riders are aware of that. But I'd also like to say the teams that we have at the finish box, you know, get in the cold water, the ice water on the horses, they're checking the horses' temperatures, checking their heart rates. And I mean, I, I've literally, I think I finished maybe an hour ago and I've just come from my horse now and that's the attention that they're receiving after the cross country. They're, after all, they're the most important, uh, important part of this sport. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, I was mentioning earlier, as uh, one of the early competitors finished, about uh, we know now we've always uh, had the welfare at the top of the agenda, but we know now so much more how to cool those horses down quickly. Oh. And unfortunately, we have a problem at one of the uh, wide oxers there. So that's a, an oxer on the race course. It's an, a very, very big wide oxer to another railed corner. But as you could have seen there, they slightly got it wrong, but the, the frangible device is gone and the horses walked away well. And probably as we were talking about horse welfare, the course design now and this fence design is, is really crucial in making sure these horses walk away from uh, little mistakes and mishaps like that. Yeah. How, how unfortunate for this, for this combination. It is uh, Ellie Jane Costello and Westmuir quality, just, uh, just walking away. But most importantly, they, they, are absolutely, uh, they are absolutely fine. So this is interesting, Nick. I think this is Andreas that was seen at the end of the course. It yeah. is. And he's just gone the alternative at that final complex where we see, where we saw Ginny get unbalanced out the saddle. He's obviously feeling his horse is a little bit tired and he wants to make sure he gets home with a clean jumping sheet and he's sacrificed maybe 10 seconds, which is four time penalties there, but he's still on track for a clear jumping round. He, he certainly is, and you, we saw how well he jumped going the longer route there. Great shot of the various fences down at that complex, and uh, he knows the best for the horse at that point. Well, after all, you know, a few time penalties is not as drastic as 20 jumping. So Benjamin Massey and Angoro de Kreska with uh, their continued passage as they move now towards the first of the water. 37.7, their dressage score. Through the water they go, Benjamin Massey for France and Angora de Kraska. Turn towards 
The skinny house to take him back into the water again. And a big jump out over 12. Oh, that was super. Nice and balanced. Gave the horse time to read the question. It jumped well. Well, here's Andreas finishing here. So, Andreas, what an experienced rider he is. And as he was saying yesterday, he hopes to have many, many more years. Well, 16.8 cross-country time pedalers giving 47.2 and uh, really highlighted in what he did back there sacrificed a few uh, seconds and uh, home could have been 20 penalties for a stop a little further on super 20 penalties and way more time folks so um, yeah I think he's done the right job there and made a good decision and it's hard to make those correct decisions when your adrenaline's up so you know but he has the experience to do that so here comes Benjamin, obviously the, I'm sure the crowd will be going wild for one of their home French riders. Yeah, huge enthusiasm. I mean, I was saying yesterday with the dressage, very, certainly rich applause and very appreciative applause for everybody. But certainly, as you would expect, the French are totally behind their own riders, as you would expect. As we would be with as our we British would be riders back in, uh, back in Britain, yeah, at uh, Badminton and Burley. I have to say, though, this event at Poe, it's one of the last events of the season. The sun's shining. Everybody is so friendly and accommodating. And it's a wonderful atmosphere here for us all to ride in. Yeah, what an end of term for the European circuit. And uh, the fact that the sun is out just makes it so much more special. So here is the combination coming up, if they stay on it with Benjamin, where they, the frangible device just went. So hopefully Benjamin will have a, a nice shot of this and we'll see it jump well. It should be five to six strides on a turn in line here. So one, two, three, four, five. And then the horse picked up the corner, jumped through really nicely. And I think you can see Benjamin is not, he's just not interfering too much, riding in a great balance and give the horse good time to work it out. Yeah, wonderful insight there from Alex Bragg at that uh, double jumping effort fence. Technically very difficult there out in the middle of the training area out in the country. James Avery now and Mr. Sneezy. Well, this a combination who have uh, been doing well for a little while. And uh, James now riding this horse at the five-star level. They uh, set out. with a dressage score of 38 and are over the Chateau de Pau at the top of the mound. Wow, saw that uh, B element well, didn't they? <laughs> That's good positive riding. Good positive riding. I think he nearly went through the middle of it, but uh, James is a very exciting up and cunning Kiwi rider. Yeah, the first five star for this New Zealand rider. Ellie Jane Costello, Westmere quality. They look to have got back into a good rhythm after that slight mishap earlier on. Um, hopefully she can get this horse. Thank 
côté du... sur le guet, le hop, déséquilibré à la réception du gros fence, il ne peut ajuster le directionnel dans l'eau, aïe, 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 quel dommage, il a fait un gros saut hein, sur le premier fence, et s'est retrouvé euh, déculassé, si vous me permettez l'expression, le cheval se représente au deuxième essai, pas de problème, allez Benjamin, c'est pas grave, faut aller au bout maintenant, avec Ungaro de Tresquer, le premier 5 étoiles du coup, il doit être déçu, il faut l'encourager, à vous qui êtes près du guet, ah là 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 là, My apologies, we are now back with you on air. We are back at Les Quatre, Les Cinq, Etoile de Pau here in the southwest of France. And uh, sat by me is, James, is Alex Bragg for Great Britain. And uh, you're watching live pictures of James Avery and Mr. Sneezy. <coughs> So we're watching James Avery, Mr. Sneezy, with that 20 penalties just a little earlier on in the course. That dressage score of 38. James Avery and Mr. Sneezy in their first five star together. Great shot of them coming directly towards us on the screen. And you can see the training ground to their right, the all-weather track. Okay. And this combination for New Zealand over that big privet before turning left on that loop within the race course training area. And if you've just joined us, you can see the dressage score in the bottom right-hand corner, the cross-country score penalties as they stand for the individual competitor at that particular point in their passage around this Pierre Michelet five-star PO cross-country course. Well, Benjamin Massey and Angaro de Kreiser looking as though they're taking the long route as well, Alex. Yeah, I'm not sure if Benjamin had a run out actually in one of the water complexes, complexes earlier, so he might just be looking to, to get home now. Um, yeah. But he, he did a great job of that and uh, made it really smooth, so uh, it'd be nice to see another one come through the finish flags. Yeah, and uh, we unfortunately couldn't see if it was Benjamin that had a stop, but what we do know is that the uh, penalties on the full cross country would probably denote that they had. Yeah, I think so. So here's James. Hopefully, it looks like he's putting that run out, earlier run out behind him and getting back in a great rhythm. I'm sure he'll be disappointed with that, but um, it'll be good experience for him. So we're back in the main arena with For France, Benjamin Massey and Ungaro de Kreiska. They are about to negotiate the final fence, the final of the 35 numbered fences, Les Cinq Etoiles de Pau. They uh, come round, set themselves up, pop over neatly. Huge applause from the home crowd here at Pau in the southwest of France. They have incurred those 47.5 penalties cross country. Here's James coming to that water complex on the race course. It's a very bold four strides there. And that was a great job from James because you see the horse just catch himself on that middle element. But he, um, he balanced the horse, didn't chase him for the five strides out, allowed him to balance himself, added a stride and came away well. Well, further unfortunate problems out on the course. We'll uh, come back there. So this is a uh, montage of the problems so far out on course. 
Everyone absolutely fine, but we're uh, watching replays of incidents as they happened. Fortunately, a slip there. That's so disappointing for them. Uh, the flag being taken out at fence number seven. Live pictures. Uh, we are uh, back with you with James Avery. So those two shoulder brushes, they're very insignificant in size, but the where they're positioned makes it very difficult to get a clear line. And uh, you just have to stay balanced, stay patient, as James has just done there, and um, hopefully give the horse time to assess the, the question. So in between those two North American stations with a uh, total penalty score thus far for jumping cross country for James Avery and Mr. Sneezy for New Zealand. Down to 28A, 28B. It's all the stride yeah. well there going through this final water. Really good. Kept the horse nice and straight. This loop really takes out the horses, so you have to um, just give them time to balance around there and then get them into a rhythm when you get across this small bridge. Well, James Avery, who uh, scored the biggest success of his career to date when winning the CCI four star short format. It's their first five star, also. They completed. Uh, uh, the four-star long format at Blenheim and Bramham this year, also a uh, tenth in the four-star short format at Chatsworth. Jack Finkney and Raphael on a score of 34.3. They were 20 seconds in the in the um, dressage arena on this horse owned by Julia Playstead. Raphael is an Irish four horse, age 15. James Avery, donc le Néo-Zélandais qui poursuit son parcours. Je vous rappelle qu'il a eu un refus sur le numéro 15. Et puis le départ a été donné à Jack Pickney pour la Grande-Bretagne, à nouveau, avec un cheval de sport irlandais qui s'appelle Raphaël, un fils de Limerick, qui est âgé de 15 ans. 22e après le dressage. So we're back with Jack Pickney and Raphael for Great Britain. Another combination having their five-star debut here at Pope. And the horse just literally taking the bit there, the bit between his teeth and running by fence number 11, the second of the swans in the water complex. This is James just finishing with the horse and he'll be trotting out now to the cool down area. That's his groom, Louis. They do a fantastic job together and they'll take him under the trees in the shade to uh, look after and get his temperature down and make sure he's well for tomorrow. Yeah, James Avery, who uh, recently scored the biggest win of his career. Well, now we are back live with Jack Pinckney and uh, Raphael for Great Britain. Having their five-star debut and perhaps i think it looks like jack is pulling the horse up or slowing him down so it looks like, uh, ready jack for the next fence yeah just looking as though he's slowed him down alex yeah well if you have just joined us i'm joined here in the commentary box by alex bragg who uh, leads the way in the clubhouse after his cross-country round with Zagreb, finished on his dressage score of 28.8. Now we move to Nikolai Oldinger on Newell for Germany. 41 there, dressage score, 15th coming towards this second phase. 
It's very interesting because it wasn't necessarily a competitive dressage mark and you could be tempted to just give the horse run for an experience. But um, the way that the cross country is going, if he had a quick clear round, he could actually fly up the leaderboard. So it's amazing how strategy and tactics come into this when you're later on in the field. Yes, and extremely close at the top after yesterday's dressage, but this, as it did last year, proved to be hugely influential. Which it should. You know, the cross-country phase should be a, a huge element of this sport, and we shouldn't lose that. And today we're seeing, we're seeing great sport, as it should be. No horses are, are, you know, coming off the worst, but we're seeing a few tricky errors, um, and the good riders and good combinations are coming to the fore. And did you mention I was at the top? Oh, that's great. <laughs> Just a couple of times. <laughs> oh dear. Just a couple of times, yeah. It was a superb round, Alex. So, back again with our live pictures of Jack Pinkney and Raphael out in the country. Yeah, it looks like Jack's horse has just got a little bit strong, so he's just taking his time, making sure he can set up for all of these combinations. Very, very smart riding from Jack. Lovely young lad. Um, they're down in our little stable block. Lovely couple. I think my wife borrowed a hairdryer from his girlfriend, actually, and that's the camaraderie of all of the riders here. It's all about the teamwork and eventing. The eventing world is very much like that, isn't it? Yep. Super over that B element. Yeah, that's where it's very sensible riding. He realized he wouldn't get the turn if he came with too much pace. Great job, Jack. Secured a top 25 finish at uh, Blenheim in the four-star long format before coming here, Jack Pinkney and Raphael. So we're now pictures to the, by the water complex. Now, this loop before the water complex, and it is Nikolai Aldinger with Newell. This Hanoverian grey by Newcomer. It's a stunning looking horse. It's always nice to see a, a nice grey horse going around, especially in the sunshine. Looks to have a huge stride, so be interesting to watch his time later on in the course. Certainly stood out in the dressage. Seamlessly made that three strides so easily, and then it, it allowed him to sit so quietly and just keep the direction. Super from Nikolai, like a training exercise for him. Just like a training on. exercise. Absolutely beautiful to watch. And you can see how the flag just bent away and they're not attached to, to come hard and fall and cause any injury. Everything is there just to allow the horse to travel through it. Oh, and he's in a super rhythm. I mean, this is a great round to be watching. Well, we've seen some super world-class riding and jumping and as my guest Alex Bragg was saying earlier we are watching a true five-star competition evolve and uh, we are watching a magnificent round here from Nikolai Aldinger and Newell really epitomizing everything that we are seeing throughout the cross-country course at the five-star here at Perth. We've seen quite a few a couple of problems this afternoon. Well now to Jack Pinkney once again and uh, Raphael well, carrying the 20 penalties from a little earlier on in the course at the big wide fence, almost like the Cotsmoor leap I was saying earlier, but obviously there's the bank in front of it and after it. Yeah, the, the bank running up to it is giving you a springboard off. The horses don't even see the ditch, but for the, the people watching, it's huge and, and it takes a great picture. So it looks like Jack's had a bit of tack malfunction and something's swinging away. Doesn't seem to be distracting the horse, so hopefully, hopefully they'll get home safely. Nikolai Oldinger and Newell now. We have uh, seen them start off extremely well. They continue to have a clean sheet in terms of jumping cross country here at Poe. Super over the first element, the big oxer in the country. Oh, that's a wonderful horse. <laughs> and 
can wow. see why. I've seen it in the dressage, and it was a very fresh, caused problems, but you can see why he perseveres with it. What a super cross-country horse. So Louise Hardwood kicking off on Balladeer Millerman. I have a, a horse which is bred by the same stallion, Storm Hill Miller, who's only nine and just went top ten at Blenheim uh, only last month. Wonderful cross-country horse. Louise has uh, a way of creating a partnership with her horses where they're very, very genuine. Well, yeah, these homebreds are uh, very much a feature of the horses that Louise rides, famously uh, at the four-star level as it was before this year with Mr. Potts. Great to see you here with Balladier Milliman. Yeah, well done. Well written, Jack. Jack Pigney going well, carrying those 20 penalties, but on his five-star debut, having a good round. I think it's important to say that it's good for Jack to get round on his first five star. You feel so much more confident going into your next one when you've got one under your belt. So uh, this will be really... Im oh, hang on a minute. Uh, it looks as though we have uh, somebody just at the other side of those North American stations. Yeah, I think that's Jack's had a fall. Uh, Jack in. Yeah, it is Jack eliminated. As soon as you uh, come off at the international level and of course uh, for the British at the British eventing level now, it is elimination if you park company with your horse. Oh look, oh my gosh. So that's where you can see that he lost control of the horse there, um, steering went. The horse is obviously as bold as brass, but um, you know, it's not what we really are hoping to see. No, but I think it just shows how genuine and bold these horses really are. Yeah, quite right. So Jack will take him back now and uh, just check with the vets that he's all okay. The doctors will check Jack, but it looks the way that they're walking away, they're going to be fine and they'll be fit for another day. Yeah, walking away, there will be another way. Well, it's a sad way to end your first five star, but they are on the feet. That is always the important thing. Well, looking now at Balladier Millerman. Yeah, Louise has just had a run out there at uh, fence seven, which is this big sort of table roll top to the brush corner. It's a very long three strides, and it uh, looked like Louise tried to ride the line and just hold for him to chip in four, but he couldn't quite fit in the extra stride. And now he just seems to have switched off to it a little bit, which is really unfortunate so early on in the course. Balladier Melamant, combination uh, with Louise, who were uh, second at Blair Castle in 2017 in the long format, four star as it, as it is now, three star then. Yeah, that's very unfortunate, really unfortunate. But when they, once they've had a run out and they've realized the door is open, it's very, very difficult sometimes to get them back on track. So Louise will have to be uh, walking back to the stables, unfortunately, there. Unfortunate for Louise Harwood and Balladier Melaman for Great Britain. But we now move on to... Yeah, this is Nikolai with that wonderful with big grey horse, Newell. Nikolai Oldinger with Newell. Still uh, going well cross-country. Dressage score 41. Coming to these offset, skinny brushes, upright brushes. Just it seamlessly. Like just he's just so playing well. with the course. Just, just playing, playing with it. Such a phenomenal horse, and he's given it a great ride. It's a real picture. This is young riders out there looking for style, accuracy, control. I mean, he sat on a wonderfully scopey horse, but he is doing a magnificent job. Yeah, the 11-year-old Hanoverian by newcomer going superbly. We're having a masterclass here. He's a little bit down on the clock. Uh, you should hopefully be coming to this sort of element here with two minutes on the clock there, so maybe 15, 20 seconds down. But, you know, the horse is traveling well and it looks like it's not taking anything out of him. And once again, the strides coming up so well over the two jumping effort elements of 28. Now, Chris Burton and uh, Quality Purdy. Well, 
It's going to be uh, interesting to see what happens because Chris Burton and Quality Purdy, I'm sure one of the favourites coming here, along with my guest, Alexander Bragg and Zagreb. They start out with a dressage score of 27.8, 27.8, which put them in sixth place overnight. And uh, nothing between our leader who is to come out in a little while, Tom McEwen and Toledo Kutglersa, who was in 24.9 overnight this is one of the key rounds i think chris is such a fast rider the horse may be not so experienced at this level i don't think but um one of the key rounds as you say has to be he's a master an absolutely master and i'm sure it's it's had some great runs in the event rider master series which would have given it great experience it's very very fast in those so i'm sure it won't have a problem running across this ground but um I will watch it with interest because this is one that could just pit me in a moment. Could just uh, could just do that. Yeah, great runs at the Event Rider Masters for Chris Burton, as of course he's had uh, great success at the five stars, as we almost come to expect from just look Chris at Burton. That look at that. I mean, Chris seen a long one, and there was no way he was going to take a check. Always thinking of the clock, even there at fence three. Wow. Event Rider Master, back-to-back -back <laughs> champions, Chris Burton. We'll be back with him. Yeah, he's Here he is. a more composed shot there, Nick, I think. A little more composed, great. yes. <laughs> Still wonderful to watch. Uh, he, he is great, and he's always in such good balance. At the uh, barrier d'attelage, the uh, barrier fence for the attelage, the cross-country for the carriage driving, the four-star carriage driving. Just pecked on landing. Wow. Brilliant for both horse and rider there. Yeah, I mean, that's where you see the balance from Chris, because that would have tipped anyone else off, and uh, he just stayed in the middle of the horse. Very, very brave horse, just picked up the fence, carried him through the combination, and they're out as if nothing never had happened. Chris has always been such a hugely stylish rider, hasn't he, across country? Well, now, Nikolai Aldinger and Newell. The uh, seconds tick away, and he, they finish with a cross-country penalty of 22.4. It was a super round. What a jumping uh, class we saw from these two. 22.4, giving them a total of 63.4 for the two phases. I think he'd be very happy with that. He had such a smooth round. Here's Chris again. This horse has a huge stride. So do you see those three strides down there were no issue for this horse. If anything, Chris has to make sure what we say, he doesn't canter through a distance. He won't canter. So the big parallel rail parallels later on, Chris will just want to make sure it gives it a little bit of room in front because he is so bold. He will gallop right up to that. And you don't want to be giving it a heavy tap and knocking that frangible pin down and uh, having 11 penalties at the end. So uh, it'd be interesting to watch him. He's just coming up to that in a few moments. The Hay de Cour at 16 for Christopher Burton and Quality Purdy. Quality Purdy, one of the uh, several horses who has helped Chris Burton win that uh, Rent Rider Marta back-to-back -back series. This year, Quality Purdy, who was uh, amongst other results, sixth at the final leg at Lanier en Barry en France just uh, a few weeks ago. Wasted no time there, Nick. He came straight across that. And I think that's where he looks like he's just in a canter, but um, he's, he's up on the clock at the moment and looking pretty calm. So here you see he's just balancing the horse, and this is that rail parallel I was on about. Very good. You Marvelous. See how, see how he took the pace away, give yeah. the horse time to jump. That's something the horse would take on much quicker, but you have to make sure that you do it well and you, you just don't want those 11 penalties. The, the mayor, Quality Purdy, owned by Claire Poole and Rebecca Burton. Chris Burton, Quality Purdy. Okay. Well, we are seeing a replay of uh, Jack Pinkney with Raphael. Jack's rein is broken there. You know, right. I said it attack malfunction. You thought so. And he had lost that left rein, and he was trying to get a hold of it, and that's where the horse just ran right into that fence. Such a shame for them.
We must uh, just confirm that both horse and rider were absolutely fine after that. They walked away. It was a uh, tack malfunction Peter there, as Alex has said. And Alex thought he could see something earlier on in the round. Something was little going a little uh, awry. Chris Burton and Quality Purdy. It is uh, this combination for Australia who we see once again. Chris with uh, another very good horse coming through in Clever Louis. Brilliant results for Clever Louis and Chris in the eight and nine year old four star short format at Blenheim back in September. Chris is very, very well horsed and why wouldn't he be? He's one of the best riders in the world and um, you, you very rarely see him on uh, something that's not capable of winning and he does an amazing job and features in most of the competitions he goes to. This table here is very skinny, but very wide. And he makes it look easy. Well done, Chris. As we follow Chris here, you see the gallop on this horse. And he is up on the clock by four or five seconds here. And he'll need those four or five seconds coming in, back into the park where the combinations are quite twisty. Great so, shot again. Phenomenal to watch. Wide big fence before the second of the water complexes. I think it's interesting to watch. This horse is a super show jumper, and it really flicks its hind legs away. And when he has a drop like that, that's what's kicking Chris out of the saddle. The horse's hind end's coming up. The back of the saddle is bumping him forward. That's what happened at the first water and a little bit there. But Chris's position was really, really good, uh, straight back in the plate. And uh, the four and five strides through that water on the race course uh, rode really nicely. Yeah, show jumping was what came to mind of that combination at the uh, furthest point of the inner part of the race course. They were so balanced, and the way they came round, it was as though he was just uh, show jumping. Phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, he's very good. And he knows he's very effective. You know, when this just gets a bit strong, you can see him get his attention down the rain, really sit up with his body. Well, we see the steepness of the gradient down to 25 and then 26 air Marais du Jardin. We're seeing uh, another world-class round here, this time from Chris Burton and Quality Purdy. We've seen a number this afternoon, including from my guests out to my right, Alex Bragg for Great Britain, who uh, rode Z uh, Zagreb and is in the lead in the uh, clubhouse at the moment on his dressage score of 28.8. Yeah, so Chris has just come into this section. He's still up on the clock. Yeah, he found that four strides a little bit short, but Chris just kept him to the point of that brush hour ahead. The horse is very well trained and very genuine. Mathieu Lemoyne and uh, singer Dossay now. As uh, we understand that Si uh, Ver Dottiz and uh, Gonzalo Blaskin Botan have uh, decided not to come forwards to the cross country phase. Mathieu's a great character and um, everybody loves him on the circuit, and uh, I'm sure he's a favourite with the French crowd. Newest starter for France, Mathieu Lemoyne on the Cell Fronte. Very exciting young horse, Stinger Dose, 12 years old, making her first appearance by Numa Dose, owned by Madame Natasha Guiminet. Exciting young horse, Stinger Dose. The first time I've seen it, but it looks to have started really well. It looks a very blood horse, lots of thoroughbred in it. So um, it'd be nice to see how it gallops around the course and uh, whether it can get close to that elusive time. Well, plenty of enthusiasm from the crowd running alongside of the ropes there, alongside their French hero. Yeah, they, you do really feel them. They're, they're very, very close to you. And they're all shouting, allez, allez, you know, and it really does G you on. So Chris Magnifique, as Christopher Burton and uh, Quality Purdy take the uh, fence at 31. 
Yeah, 31 and 32. And Here he comes. He is uh, he is on track for the time. So uh, I'm very I'll be very very pleased for Chris, but also a little bit disappointed for myself. But the margin between Alex and Chris from the dressage is literally one point, one penalty point. Huge round of applause for Chris Burton and Quality Purdy as they make their way around the Poe Arena. <laughs> Just as a quick glance at his watch. Oh my gosh, so close. So close. So close. Yeah. He put four of the time penalty for those seconds over. So it is two cross country time penalties for Chris Burton and Quality Purdy. An outstanding round, nevertheless. They, are, they have a score of 29.8. 29.8. Which slots them into second place with Alexander Bragg and Zareb holding that top position at the moment on 28.8. Yeah, I mean, the horse looked a little bit weary coming through that arena, but Chris just kept his back. He didn't rush the horse and he wasn't going to chase those five seconds. He wanted to make sure the horse got home well. And uh, it's, a, it's a horse which is going to be super for the future. I know it could be a future team Australian horse for him. So. Yeah, we always have to uh, look to the future. A super round from the Australian, Chris Burton. Yeah, us young riders do have to look to the future, Nick. You're dead right. I think we always have to look to the future. <laughs> oh, dear. No, he'll be pleased with that. Mathieu Lemoyne and uh, singer Dose. So as it stands at the moment, the top of the leaderboard is Zagreb and Alexander Bragg on 28.8. Quality Purdy and Christopher Burton for Australia, 29.8. Zen Shearer and Rosalind Cantor, who were fifth here last year on 33.2. Virgil and Shane Rose for Australia. Great round from that combination on 34.6. And uh, Kevin McNabb on Don Quedam on a score of uh, 43.6, having added 18.7 time penalties cross country this afternoon. Yeah, Matteo is flying here. He is um, currently he is on the clock, and it, what we're saying it seems a very, very thoroughbred horse. I don't know the horse, I don't know the breeding, but um, it looks to be travelling really well across this ground at Poe. Yeah, actually, the uh, Cell Francais. Oh, okay. So there is a lot of blood in the Cell Francais. The French are very proud of that breeding line, um, and it's nice to see one of their their own French horse is going so well under a French rider. Yeah, it's something uh, that I certainly touched on earlier. I mean, the Cell Francais and the whole breeding program in France for sport horses has been immaculate, really, for a long, long time, hasn't it? Yeah, very good. I mean, everybody is trying to work on their breeding program, as are the Germans and the Dutch, um, as hopefully we are, and yeah. uh, trying to keep up to speed. But um, these horses now, they're not horses that are not good enough to jump or not good enough to do dressage. They're elite horses in their own right, and it's so competitive. And it's like they say, you you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. You really do need a proper bit of kit under you now. And these horses are like Ferraris when you're driving them out on the cross country. Felicity Collins is with us now for Great Britain on Just Amazing. Sport horse of Great Britain registered. Mayor by Western Justice. Western Justice, the sire of so many good sport horses, particularly event horses as uh, they come forward with a dressage score of 34.8. Felicity's ever such a young rider, and she's, this is her second ride here. You know, and to have two horses at five star at such a young age is, um, is a real kind of... Uh, oh, just watching her through here, sorry. What a shame. Well, Felicity, as Alex was saying, out on her second horse. Two horses she's brought on herself through the ranks this time. Just amazing. Same refusal at the same fence as she has on RASH Contendor. I was saying she's done a good job to get two horses to five star. You know, it's a real credit to her. And that is a real shame. I chose to go the left route there, which I don't think many people have. I felt the horses could see it as soon as they jumped over the little roll top. Um, but she chose in the, the preferred route of the right-hand route, and the horse just didn't seem to read it. 
um, which is really unfortunate, but hopefully they can get going again. Yeah, there isn't an alternative there, but you can jump to the left or the right That's of right. the arrow as it faces you as you come down the, the mound. Mathieu Lemont and singer Doze clear so far. You can see that clock ticking away down in the bottom right hand corner. 21A. 21B, no problem at all for the home runner, Singer Doze. He's having a great ride. Hopefully he's enjoying it. You don't get time to smile when you're riding around there, but believe me, inside, you know, we are, we're really living the dream riding these horses around these cross-country courses, and um, it's a real privilege for us to be able to do it. And I think that's when you see people, the relief on their faces when they get to that finish line, and uh, it's exhilarating for the whole team. Yes, and I think it's worth mentioning that it isn't just whether you're first or second time round the five-star. No matter how many times you've done it, it's that exhilaration of getting round, even if you're an experienced rider. Yeah, the nerves never go, Nick, so yeah. with, with the nerves comes relief and excitement afterwards when you, uh, you really conquer that course. Well, the Frenchman continues to lap up the applause from the crowd as they make their way now from inside the race course and back into part the park, the Domaine de Serre. Yeah, and he's looking good, looking great. The horse is full of running. Um, and he's just been taking everything in his stride. Very, very smooth round so far. Hopefully we see another one clear very near to the time. Well, we're back now with the young British rider. Well, unfortunately for Felicity, she'd uh, really made a positive restart after the initial stop but putting a hand up deciding to call it a day there will be far more days for this very good young british rider with these two young horses that she's brought on herself but no such problems for the french rider glances down at his watch having taken those uh, two offset skinny brushes yeah, I mean, he's, he's really competitive here. The horse looks like it's just starting to tire a little bit. And you can see him just giving a little tickle, saying, come on, start to dig deep for me. We don't want to, um, you know, get after these horses and think that we're disciplining them, but you really want to say, come on, two more minutes left, fight for me and um, give me 110%. Continuing to instill the confidence in the horse, that partnership. Just continue to uh, keep giving me that little bit more. And that's certainly the case for Singer Dorsé with Mathieu Lemoyne in the plate. And I think it's important to say that these fences are still big. They need jumping. When a horse is a little bit tired like this, it can canter home very, very comfortably as long as you sensibly ride it. And it looks that's what, what Mathieu is doing there. So hopefully he can encourage it home. Well, now we see our overnight leader out on track. It is Tom McEwen and Toledo de Cursa. They had a score of 24.9 in the dressage. Tom out on his uh, second horse of the day. He came forward in the very early stages on uh, Figaro van Het Brukshof. Just had uh, an unfortunate stop or uh, a, a run in front of the fence and a few time penalties but a good round nevertheless for in his uh, first round on Figaro van Het Bruxenhof. This time Toledo de Cursa. Tom was with us earlier in the booth. Unfortunately Tom having to pull out of the British team at the last minute with Toledo de Cursa with a very slight injury from the FAI Longines Championships from that British team. But we're delighted that uh, he has been able to make it here to Poe. Sits tight over the chateau and sits tight for a flyer as well, <laughs> well over 4B. You can see the scope of that horse, but he is um, ever so bold and uh, Tom just needs to slightly curb him earlier on. So this, this, uh, this big fence here to the brush corner, it's going to feel big because Toledo de Curse is one of the best jumping horses on the circuit. But there's Tom, true professional, keeps the horse's ears right between those flags and there's no way that he was going to say no. Look how careful he is with his feet though, he's so sharp, he always gives the fence his air and um, just seems to have an engine that will run and run and run. We were talking about show jumping earlier on, and this horse is an outstanding show jumper. You have to be outstanding at all three 
phases, but it is an outstanding show jump. Mathieu Lemont and Singer Dose takes the uh, penultimate jumping effort. That fence at 34, a double jumping effort, being encouraged on sympathetically by the French rider Mathieu Lemont. Huge cheers from this enormous crowd here at Pau in the south of France. Over that final fence you go. You can see the crowd going wild. What an amazing uh, feeling, but what, importantly, what a super round for this young horse, this exciting young horse, Singer Duse, making uh, this five-star debut. Che cheers all round, and I'm sure Mathieu will be lapping up every bit of what is happening here as he uh, canters steadily towards the exit. Yeah, I'm sure he will. He'll be very proud to have done that in front of his home crowd. And back with Tom here. I mean, this is this is the exciting round of the day. I mean, dressage leader, such a good jumping record. Um, Tom is a true professional. I mean, he, he's still such a young lad, but he seems to have so much experience already, and uh, he's just given this horse such a beautiful ride. They should be able to take a good flyer at this brush fence and uh, keep a good rhythm. Tom McEwen and uh, Toledo de Casa going well. This is the round to watch in terms of taking. Very very good. Good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very and here's another exciting combination coming out, Nick. Tim Price on Wesco. I think he had Tim in earlier after his first ride on that beautiful Mariscona. Yeah, we, we certainly did, and apologies out there for everyone. I just uh, needed to stop talking for the uh, live commentary that was taking place in the arena, or just outside the arena. Yeah, we were saying that Tom McEwen, in terms of the placing, this is that is this is arguably, or that was arguably the round of the day, or that is unfolding with Tom. But Tim Price as well, on Wesco, 25.6 their dressage score, all to play for, for the two combinations out on track at the moment. This is such a, a special combination. Um, you know, Tim loves this horse. He had his first five-star win on this horse at Le Moulin several years ago. The horse was off with a bit of an injury. He's made a comeback over the last couple of seasons and had huge success. And I think this will be the first long-format five-star back from injury for Wesco. And um, let's hope it's a good one. Yeah, let's hope so. Tim thinks so much of this horse. Long layoff, as Alex has said. And you can see that, you know, poor Felicity coming down with a bit of an inexperienced horse, inexperienced riding, where Tim comes down there and just makes that like a, a, a school book call and fair question. Well, we're seeing pictures of so many people still out on course, and uh, we still have three still to come forward, three new starters still to come forward on course for this 35 fence. Five-star Michelet, Pierre Michelet, design cross-country track. Pierre Michelet, a uh, real master at designing the tracks, particularly the fast galloping tracks and the fast galloping track is being negotiated so well by Toledo de Cursa and Tom McEwen. That dressage score of 24.9, overnight leader from the first phase. Yeah, Tom just took a check of his watch there and he is, he is about on track. So if he can keep this piece, pace up, he could uh, finish at the top. Did anyone say when Tim was on earlier about the rugby at all? Uh, I was sat there watching it with a couple of the Kiwis and uh, a great performance by England earlier on uh, in the World Cup to reach the final. Well, what I would say is it's not going to stop New Zealand being in a phenomenal... Uh, uh, 
a phenomenal rugby team, but uh, what a win for England. What a win. And I, I know you've played rugby, haven't well, you? Well, that's exactly it, right? I thought I should mention it, really. Yeah, so. I knew you had, yeah. No, so many of us love the game of rugby, and it will be a great day next uh, week as England take their place in the final. So, Tim Price and Wesco are uh, seamlessly over the final two jumping efforts in the first water. And now to the second water for Tom McEwen and Toledo de Curza. Saw the stride, got it. Wow. Yeah, I think Tom is riding very competitive here. He wants a great result and um, it's all coming off for him. Well, now we catch up with uh, Tom coming down the hill once again to these uh, two offset skinnies. You can see the alternative there set at 90 degrees, but certainly the alternative is nowhere near in the plan for Tom McEwen and Toledo de Cursa. The alternative B we saw there set at 90 degrees. Yeah, Tom just give the horse a little pat on the shoulder of the whip to say, this is your takeoff stride. That's the right place to go. And the horse just boom, straight through the middle of those flags and off he goes again through the North American stations. It is for Tom McEwen and Toledo de Cursa at the uh, Guy Forestier now. Number 28, fence 28. A, the log into the water. Superb at B. Yeah, Tom just put a curve in there. I don't know if you could notice that when you were watching. And that just made that four strides much easier for Toledo to manage. And then he didn't break the rhythm, so he was quick away from the fence. So the white blaze of Wesco. Very efficient there. Yeah, I think that's probably the shortest line that anyone's taken so far today. And oh. that's where this horse is, is very experienced also, as with mine. And you can get away with things like that because they're so used to those fences coming up thick and fast. And uh, he's got his ears pricked. I mean, it's a great picture, isn't it? What a picture. And I was uh, saying earlier when Tim was on his first round, Tim and his wife Janelle have had an amazing record in the European five stars over the last three years, including winning Le Moulin this year, Tim himself. Now Regis Poudin for France and uh, Torastro. Torastro. Owned by uh, Regis himself, Nathalie Carrière, Earl Alavage de la Salama. They start out with that score of 38.2. Yeah, these riders at the latter stages, like I said earlier, are going to feel their chances. Because he would have been a little way down in the dressage list, but to think he's an opportunity of going into the show jump tomorrow into the top 10 at a big five star on home soil would be um, a great incentive for him to have a kick on. Well, here is Tom into the arena, almost having to slow Toledo de Cursa down. Yeah. Saw the stride beautifully through those uh, houses, but wow, is this horse still motoring? Yeah, he's full of running, and it's good to see horses finishing like that. I don't think he's quite going to make the time, but he's not going to be far off. Look huge, huge oh. cheers from the crowd. Do you think Tom's a bit excited? I think he's very excited. Two seconds over the time. 0.4 of a time penalty for each of the seconds over. So it is a total of 25.7. And they do take the lead with those uh, with the two seconds over, 0.8 of a time penalty. It means that Tom McGuin and uh, Toledo de Cursa take that uh, top spot after uh, their two phases. And it is now the turn of... Wesco and uh, Tim Price to uh, also continue to uh, put in a really good round. They were, of course, in second place after their dress art with 25.6. Oh, so 25.6, so they can't, uh, they can't go ahead of Tom McEwen. Yes, they can. I apologise. They just. can just go. I was. I apologise. 25.6. They can uh, go ahead by uh, point 0.1 with a uh, clean sheet cross country. Alex, it's been an absolute pleasure having you in here. Thank you uh, 
Thanks so much for coming in. Your insight and your conversation has been amazing. Thank you so much. You are at the moment uh, currently uh, just being picked into second place, but I know it's going to be so tight at the top uh, tomorrow. It's going to be one. It's going to be a big day. It is certainly going to be. I've really enjoyed it. I would have been watching it anyway, and uh, I'm thrilled for Tom. You know, we're great friends, and uh, actually, I might just run down to the wash-off area and give him a big old pat on the back right now. Well, we give you a big pat on the back as well. Super round. The first one uh, within the time and to go uh, go clear earlier on on Zagreb. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much, Alex. Cheers, Nick. Cheers. So we're with Pregis Prudon and uh, Tarastro at Fence 14, the high clear channel. So over those offset skinny brushes go Tim Price and Westco continuing to go well over the big wide table as they make the work in between the two American, North American stations, those uh, Native American stations. Now turning left towards 28A. Oh, what a shame for Tim. What a shame for Tim. The same thing happened at uh, Burley and unfortunately for Tim, he had uh, a parting of his ways, not with Wesco, but uh, through the water, this water last year. What a shame for Tim. Chasing that top spot, he had uh, point one of a time penalty to go uh, clear and within the time to take the top spot ahead of Tom McEwen and Toledo to Cursa. That is sport. And that is equestrian sport. But the main thing is both horse and rider are fine. A horse that uh, Tom thinks, that uh, Tim thinks so pro much about. Gemma Tattersall now and uh, Yalapino. Yalapino, who won the uh, final leg, leg of the event, Rider Masters, with Gemma at Lonio de Bombari just a few weeks ago. The second of her very exciting young horses to come forwards here on track at Poe. Well, we see a replay there of Wesco and uh, Tim Price, the horse stopping directly in front of the fence, but it didn't stop because it wasn't going to jump. It stopped because it uh, stumbled well before it uh, got there. And uh, Tim, unfortunately, thrown to the front. And thankfully, Tim just missing the fence himself as he uh, went head first down into the water. So we move to Regis Poudin and uh, Tarastro now. The uh, final of the French Cup to come forward. Yalapino, Gemma Tassasol, with this sport horse of Great Britain, registered chestnut by Chile Morning. Owned by Chris Stone. So both these young horses brought forward by Gemma Tuttlesall, both by the sire, Chilly Morning, owned by Chris Stone, as are both of these horses today. Well, my final guest of the day is uh, Jenny Howe, who has uh, just negotiated this cross-country track on Andalgo de Windsor. Bo, as he's known, as we uh, just watch Gemma Tattersall and Yalapino make their way back into the water. Out of the water they go before coming directly back in over the second of the uh, Canards, the Ducks, and then seeing those three strides over the fence at 12, having uh, exited the water itself. Well, a little bit of a reminder there for uh, Yalapino. In order to make sure the horse is just uh, thinking about it for these uh, big fences for his own sake. A very warm welcome, Ginny. 
So how was uh, that with an Adalgo de Windsor this afternoon? He gave me such a good ride. Um, he is an absolute cross-country machine, and uh, sometimes I just need to let him go and get on with it. Um, and he just doesn't look at anything. He was fab. We did have one slightly hairy moment towards the end uh, where he was almost a little bit too bold, um, and I kind of lost the stirrup and was hanging around his ears, but uh, luckily he didn't get penalized for it. Yeah, your second five-star start. Yep. Well, Regis Prudent and uh, Terrastro, we're uh, looking at the moment, Ginny. And uh, Regis clear so far as we move back to Gemma Tattersall, who moves out into the country, out over fence number 16. What's it like to jump that fence that takes you out into the country? Oh, it's lovely. It's a nice moving fence. Uh, it's been a slightly let up fence uh, for the horses before you have this technical question here where you just have to get your line um, and it's relatively skinny there. Um, and then you can move on down the racetrack. Almost jumped that on the angle. We saw, uh, we saw Wesco before an unfortunate uh, fall in the water, but we, we really saw that jumped on the angle by Wesco and Tim Price a little yeah. earlier. Efficiency. Yeah, these riders going for the time um, really do angle that. Uh, I played slightly safer. Um, just I wanted to have completion, and you know I had I felt I had something to prove uh, after Burley not going quite to plan. But you know uh, this uh, at any five star, it is a big test, isn't it? It's huge. It really and is. And I'm delighted for you that you were you were clear, as you say. Thank you. Yeah, no, it really is. I mean, yeah, at this level, anything can happen. Well, we are uh, out with uh, Ludwig Svenestol and El Kazir SP. This, the combination, who were eighth at the FEI Longin European Championships at uh, Le Moulin at the end of August. They come out with a dressage score of 32.4. And uh, that put this combination in 12th place. Good to uh, see Ludwig going well. Had a, uh, a fall on his young horse earlier on. Then came forward on his second horse, the, uh, the man, Balamist, and now El Kazir SP for uh, Ludwig. Ludwig's really establishing himself now in the senior ranks, isn't he? He really is. Having three horses at five star is pretty impressive. Um, although the first two rides didn't go quite to plan, he'll be looking to have a really good run with this one. He certainly will. Regis Prudent and uh, Terrastro, we see, about to come in to the main arena. You're uh, watching pictures as the time uh, ticks away. And as we see that time tick away, 18, 17 seconds to go towards the uh, zero point. Well, a combination that are taking the uh, long route here. We were talking about this earlier. Um, interesting, we out of sight because you have to go all the way around, don't you, to the yeah. C alternative, that upright brush. Yeah, he was really quick thinking there. He had a big jump over the A element and realized that he wasn't going to make it to the BC corner. Uh, that's actually where I had my slightly hairy moment. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, he did choose to do the alternative, which worked really well. But it's uh, making it all work out when things don't go quite to plan, exactly. isn't it? Particularly at this level. Gemma Tattersall and uh, Yalapino. And a, uh, a run out for, for this combination, carrying 20 penalties. Huge cheer for the French combination coming into the arena. Sits up. Gets the stride, just waits for that uh, second element of fence 34 to come to him. He just put on onto Astro. The uh, seconds are ticking away with the penalties, but I'm sure they'll be delighted with this round. See a fantastic stride at that roll top. Over they go. And once again, the big French crowd here, delighted to see Regis Prudent and Terrastro go uh, clear jumping cross country with 20.4 cross country time penalties, giving them a two face score of 58.6 and into 11th place. Well, here we see uh, Ludwig once again, and oh, what a shame. And problems again on course for uh, Ludwig Svenestol, this time at uh, number seven, and he's put his hand up. 
Perhaps you'd like to talk us what you through what yeah, you saw. Yeah, so there. that Jim. combination has been much of a discussion on uh, Friday night, uh, particularly for me. Uh, it can be ridden on the three strides, which are um, very forward, and, uh, and uh, it could also be ridden on the four. Well. We've seen this happen on a few occasions this afternoon. The horse needing to be bold and big over that first element and then get the control and balance back to jump right yeah, over that you big Yeah, get your element. eye on your line and some are really over jumping that A element, which then causes uh, it to be a little bit trickier to get to the B. Well, now we catch up with Gemma through those uh, Native American ha stations. Well, he's still fighting, he's still wanting to, uh, Yalapino is uh, still wanting to move ahead, the man by Chile Morning. Now on this loop, out of that uh, water for the final time, which will take them round to that uh, very well-presented broom. Yes, it really is a beautifully built course. Um, it's brilliant coming here to France, and their imagination is fantastic, particularly that uh, pink palette, which I was very happy to have behind me. <laughs> yes, we've spoken a bit about yeah, that. There it is. Here it is. <laughs> it's upright, it's narrow, but uh, perhaps it's the upright nature of it towards the end of the course where you've got to give it that respect. Uh, yeah, you really have to, um, and especially after the, the water just previous uh, and then the witch's broomstick, you've got to co come back and make sure they're paying attention here. Well, your horse, you say tricky in dressage, but improved uh, with every outing. Yeah, he uh, doesn't find uh, dressage the most easy, uh, but he really is getting better. I mean, a huge improvement on his Burley test, which was, um, yeah, didn't go to plan. Uh, <laughs> but uh, here he focused and tried really hard for me, and I couldn't be happier, and next year is going to be very, very exciting. Very, yeah, it's all about the learning curve, and, uh, you know, it doesn't just happen necessarily the first time at a five-star. Well, here is Gemma Tattersall. Well, with uh, already with those two stops on the uh, on the board at the two separate fences, denoting the two separate twenties, the, if you're new to us, to eventing, delighted you're with us, that's why we have the uh, 40 penalties at the moment. The two stops of 20 each at the separate fences for Gemma Tattersall and Yalapino, taking that long route because nothing to Gain by going the direct and, route. Uh, Gemma wants to get the mare back, and uh, you know, with the 40 jumping already, she's she just wants to get her back. So, huge applause for uh, Gemma Tatasol of Yalapino coming in to the arena here in Po. She is the uh, last rider on course with the mayor, Yalapino. That's neatly popping over those uh, two penultimate jumping efforts, just easing the mayor around in front of the VIP marquee. Huge cheers from the crowd, huge appreciation. And uh, asking for a last big effort from Yalapino. Gemma gets it. And uh, there will be plenty more days for this uh, very young horse. Uh, but uh, excitingly, forwards tomorrow for the cross country. 50 for the uh, show jumping. 53.6 the total cross country score to add to their dressage. 80.8 giving a, uh, a ranking of 21 after the first two phases. So that means that Tom McEwen and uh, Toledo de Cursa are overnight leaders. After dressage, will lead into the show jumping tomorrow on a score of 25.7. And that uh, scoreboard coming up now, confirmed 25.7 for Tom McEwen and Toledo de Cursa. So the top eight, Alexander Bragg and uh, Zagreb, Great Britain, 28.8. Great round from uh, Alex and Zagreb. Christopher Burton and Qualif Birdie on uh, 29. Point eight. Rod Cantor and Zenshira, 33.2 for Great Britain. Shane Rose and Virgil on 34.6. Kevin McNabb, Don Guidam, 43.6. Tim Price for New Zealand, 44.5. Andreas Dabowski and FRH Batsavidan, 47.2 for uh, Germany. Well, there is uh, literally just over a fence between the first three. Uh, 
for tomorrow's show jumping for tomorrow's show jumping as we move now to ninth Mathieu Lemoyne and singer Dose uh, 49 Regis Proudhon and Terastro 58.6 Glenn Fly really good round from Brazil's uh, Marcelo Totti on 59.9 for the Futu phases Holly Jacks more inspiration for Canada 60.4 well that was a lady who was smiling round the course delighted with her uh, the way more inspiration went does it saw it Sarah Way and Dasit Kulidan, the little pocket rocket, the little Connemara cross, 61.8 in 13th. Izzy Taylor called me Maggie May, 62.2. Nikolai Oldinger, Newell for Germany, 63.4. Regis Proudhon and Van der Duplessis for France on 69.1. Then we move to uh, Virginia Howe and Andalgo de Winzo. Virginia, who sat by the side and was delighted with the cross country round from Andalgo or uh, though it is known at home, 73.2. Tom McEwen with his second horse, well, the first horse he had out this afternoon, Figaro van Brexenhof, 74.3. Jamma with the first horse she brought out this afternoon, Chilly Night, 78.3. James Avery and Mr. Sneezy on 79.2. Gemma on her uh, last horse, Yalapino, 80.8. Arnaud Boiteau on Quariano, 84. Benjamin Massey for France on 84.9. Sam Eckroyd for Great Britain on 85. Then uh, Remy Pilo on uh, Tour Le Chic de Levant for France, 86.1. Kirsty Johnson completed the cross country on Classic and she has a two face score of 98.3. Isabel English on uh, Field Out Mouse, another great little Connemara thoroughbred cross, 100.1 their score. Sarah Mullimore on Compierre, 104.1. Charlotte East and King Albert, 115.9. These are the 29 who completed the cross country course this afternoon afternoon and who will go forwards to the final horse inspection tomorrow morning as we see pictures of uh, Toledo de Cursa and Tom McEwen their fantastic round they were just two seconds over the time but those that point eight of a time penalty was good enough to keep them in uh, first place ahead of Alexander Bragg and Zagreb who were home on their dressage score of 28.8 with 29.8 quality Purdy and Chris Burton in third place. Super shots of uh, Tom McEwen and Toledo Cursa over that uh, final fence. I'm sure you'd agree with that, Virginia. Absolutely, yeah. It's fantastic for Tom. I know he thinks a huge amount of this horse and they really deserve it. It's just brilliant. Could this be uh, Tom McEwen's week? He has uh, got the amazing Toledo de Cursa. We now see live shots of the lake. The uh, park obviously a lot quieter than it was earlier on that's the large lake i was talking about with just uh, a portion of it used for the uh, first and third water jumping efforts i said we were uh, in touching distance at the start of the program of the pyrenees there are the pyrenees with that little bit of snow on the top further shots of the uh, offset brushes there well it just uh, leaves me to uh, thank my final guest Ginny Howe, thank you so much for being with us. And uh, we will be back on air at 8.25 in the morning for the uh, marathon of the four-star single driving championships. This is Nick Wood saying it's been a fantastic afternoon of cross country. We look forward to all the excitement of marathon four-star carriage driving and the five-star eventing show jumping tomorrow afternoon. A very good evening. You're never gonna keep me down.